Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. Juicifer? Yeah, this try a sip like of it, dude. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's, good yeah. it's an IPA, but it's juicy Ooh, and fruity. It and good. Like, I like IPAs, though. Dude. I know what an IPA is because That's of you nice. two. I like that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Of you both. <laughs> you didn't know what dude, IPAs before. Jordan, before? I just didn't. I, I guess you just it's didn't acquire taste. Haven't, you haven't discovered them exactly. Then? Okay, yeah. For Jordan sure. is like my favorite to go to the bar and drink with because he has no shame <laughs> in going up to the bar and just being like, eh, "Give me uh, your cheapest IPA." Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. What's the, what's the cheapest thing you have? Uh, I, yeah, want yeah. I want yeah, that. Yeah, give me, totally. give me six. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to let you know I have no standards with taste. Yeah. I'm just trying to save a buck, man. I'm just trying to save a dollar. Forget that, Hell forget. yeah. I'm trying to save lots of dollars recently. <laughs> dollar dollar bills, y'all. Dollar dollar bills. Oh, we got a mic stand falling? Oh, we're oh, good. Mine, mine's all right. Just, just making sure he's tight. Ugh. I feel like Alex is always tight. Always. We Not all know. always, I wish. You guys have watched the show that's Workaholics. The oh, I absolutely. Love yeah, Workaholics. Sure. Tight butthole, man. Yes, yeah. that's what reminded me of. That. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. They just like pretty much anything they describe as cool is tight butthole, right? Yeah, yeah. Tight totally. butthole. <laughs> tight butthole. Do, yeah. they, do they use the opposite? Like, Loose they don't butthole? say loose butthole, but they will say like that is so not tight butthole. <laughs> it's so it's not, just tight not butthole. tight butthole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder how all the not tight buttholes feel about that. You know, I don't it's know. Hard, hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> hard to say. <laughs> I feel like if your butthole's not tight, it's kind of intentional. Probably, that or you're, yeah. You're asking for it. Whatever no, you're no, doing you, in your I think totally unless right. you're, like, unless you're people with a loose asshole are trying for that. <laughs> in theory, you if you're help. in prison, then it might not be intentional. Well, true, but that's unfortunate. We're not. It's you unfortunate. Know. Yeah. But if it's intentional, then like hell yeah. You know, guns a blazing. There you go. Could you imagine being in prison and your prison cellmate is somebody who got arrested for something extremely violent, extremely aggressive? Like, They're like he killed th- four children or something like that. Like two or like raped a guy and six then like five, and he just loves to rape you. Ugh. I would, uh, I've actually thought about a scenario similar to this before. And uh, I would just like your, warn your dream prison cellmate. <laughs> my, <laughs> my dream cellmate. No, for sure. But I, uh, I don't know how I see it. Is if anybody with first day to prison, I don't know if that's a thing. Like whatever first it is, day, first day yeah. of prison. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, everybody if people has are, If people are giving me weird eyes or whatever, I will let them know that even if I die in the process, if anything tries to go near my b hole, their dick's coming off. <laughs> for sure, I'm ripping that bitch off. Whatever, it's got to go down. I'll let them know. And then nobody wants their dick ripped off. <laughs> so it seems like Absolutely a good defense. Not. They're like, this yeah. fucker's crazy. Yeah. I ain't going to try to rape him. So that's my way. Well, then they're, they're just going to they're just gonna fucking dommer you and shove a broomstick up your ass. No dick to rip off then. Damn, unless I reach for it, I can try my best. I mean, I guess. If I put in all but my effort. But if you're effort, on the end of a, like a five-foot broomstick, oh, you're not going to be man. able to reach that. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be good. But then they don't get any pleasure out of it either. I mean, I guess... Ramming, well, yeah, but I mean, like that—that's the, the, the thing. That's the thing, thing with sexual assault, right? Yeah, it's all about the dominance. It's the assertion true, of power. True, for sure. Yeah, a lot of them aren't even gay, right? They just like the yeah, dominance. Yeah, oh, totally. Well, aren't even that, gay. That's <laughs> gay. If they're, if they're yeah. down to rape bee holes, like they might be a little. <laughs> we're, maybe gay. we're off to a great start here. Guys. <laughs> oh, God, I'm, I'm digging this. this. Is rough. <laughs> <laughs> you just like it's talk it out one night. You're on like top bunk. He's on bottom because he wanted bottom, and he asserted his dominance on the first night. But you're on bottom whenever he wants to rape you. But one night you're like, hey, man, you awake? <laughs> you yeah. approach him. <laughs> hey, yeah. you He's like, what? <laughs> you're what? All right. God. Hey, man, uh, you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. Why? Have you ever questioned your sexuality? I just, it, I, I don't know, man. It just seems like you're actually kind of liking it. Like more than just the domination <laughs> thing. It seems like you're actually kind of like good way. Be like, me. I think you... I think, I, I think you kind of like putting gay. your you're penis in my butthole. Is, no, no, I don't. No, I, I, I do. It's just to, just to <laughs> the dudes apply that, my dominance. For sure, though. The dudes that do rape people in prison, like, what's their attitude about it? Like, if you ask them, they're just like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know. Just, it, <laughs> like, are they I, happy about it? Or are they, like, secretive? They're like... I would never. And then they no, do oh, it. No, I, I think they're I think totally, they're down. Yeah, right? yeah. I think they're like, hell yeah, fuck that bitch, you know? They're yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope none of us end up in prison. You know? 
I feel like See, if any of us were to, it might be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's fair. fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be careful. <laughs> yeah, well, if you end up getting raped, I feel like you should be like the opposite. You should be like, yeah, he fucked me. Yeah, like you just embrace it, you know. I don't know if I'll no, embrace that, it. That would be an interesting. I mean, that would be the reversal. smartest way to do it, but like, I don't know if I can do that. That's too much. I feel like I that would also, yeah, that would also like open up <laughs> the doors awful. to other people. They'd just be like, oh, like that guy exactly. Take it. Yeah, you can't for sure. That would be awful. It was like, yeah. well, he didn't even mind. The people <laughs> well, like, that normally convince, wouldn't do it are like, if you convince them that, okay. that you actually like it, then they'll be like, oh, it's weird. It's just to assert dominance. Like, I'm not I, trying to start a relationship. Oh, I'm trying to make oh, you a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're like, That's a good I think point. we should take this relationship to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> when do you get out of here? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, when, <laughs> do you, when do you I'll get move. out of prison? I'll move to you. I'll move to your city. I'll come. Oh, man. On your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is. <laughs> <laughs> we got off to a real sexual start. Oh right? man, we're just talking about bee holes. Like time. you can't even call that sex, though. It's not sex. Yeah, we got off to a really rapey start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. A little more accurate. Well, at least we're on the receiving side, so we're like not sounding like the creepy rapey ones. Exactly, we're the victims. True, here. we're the victims. True. <laughs> what what does that say about us? Like we're projecting a bunch upon of, ourselves, we're a bunch of pussies that should you know? end up in prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what I was getting at, but accurate, I guess. <laughs> yeah, also fair. Yeah, we're sure. <laughs> oh, man. So, how you guys been in life? Been good, man. <laughs> well, I'm not wearing a shirt pocket like both of you, so. I'm oh, in, yeah, for true. Sure. What are you going to hold? I don't know how I'm sure about that life right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Button down life with the shirt pocket. <laughs> Same yeah. side, too. Classy look. True. Yeah, your shirt's pretty nice. Your oh, shirt's definitely you. nicer Thank than you. mine. I'll give you that. I have this thing. <laughs> yours look has this, a little more look colors on the collar. Like, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Like, you look like you got yours at a place. To any time yeah, yeah, I, I did get it at a place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at a place. At a place. <laughs> like, oh, I got place. mine at a that place. Like a no flea market. A what do you call it? A thrift store. Thrift store. Yeah. But, Ooh. <laughs> it's like all I shop at. Whenever I, I don't see even shop. shirt pockets, I always walk up and I put my three middle fingers down the shirt and I like move just it up like and you down. were ramming your three middle fingers down your throat just before we started rolling. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can see this again. This is the Gogatron three thousand right here. I almost puked last time. I, I had a gag <laughs> reflex. Yeah, just had a you know, some guys are into that. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, not not back with the rape topic, please. <laughs> no. no, let's 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 direct ourselves away from that. <laughs> yeah, we can't <laughs> spend the entire podcast just talking about prison rape. <laughs> no, no, let's not bad, do that. Bad look. We we'll don't reflect that. on yeah, JSP that way. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, it's thank you for respecting the pod. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Three fingers down the throat. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm doing it. I think I'm turned on. That's a little the Gogatron 3000, and I'm not doing the, it wait, again. The Gogatron. You saw it. The Gogatron. <laughs> the camera saw it. It's on video for one time and yeah, one time only. This, this is, is out there. That like that is a, a record of you doing that. Yeah, that's gonna yeah, be held I mean, over I've your head forever. I mean, that any, any other podcasts? Have you stuck? No, no, that is a first. There you go. That's that a, is first. a first. The Gogatron. It sounds like a either in Transformers or like the Gorgonites from. You guys remember the little Army Men movie with the, the real Army no. Men? No, no. Called like Little Soldiers or Toy Soldiers. Oh or something. shit! No, dude, I saw that a once. Dude gets stuck in the. Uh, yeah, dude. It, stuck it, in the. Yeah, it was like all like little kid disposal. toys, but it was fucking brutal. It, it, like, it, it I always thought show. when I was a little kid, I remember feeling like it was like rougher than your average Dude, kids totally. movie. Dude, totally. Yeah, sure. when I was a little kid, it kind of scared the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, it, it was a little bit scary. Yeah. yeah. When I watched yeah, it, now, it was a little brutal. It's nothing, but like it's yeah, right, I, I right. remember feeling kind of like slightly weird about it when I was yeah. like wee laddie. Just yeah. like uh, uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Dude. I actually loved Courage when I was a little kid, but now uh, that I watch it when I'm older, I'm like, that shit is fucked up. Yeah, dude, I was <laughs> never allowed to watch that show as a kid. Really? Yeah, really. really. Were you allowed to watch SpongeBob? No, uh, I like chose not to. I just like wasn't really. I mean, I understand. Wasn't really into it. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch SpongeBob. <laughs> I know really? so I many people that weren't years allowed. Later. Like, yeah, years sure. later, I was like, there were a lot of jokes that went over my head back <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, I just like I never really enjoyed it. 
but like SpongeBob's I enjoy great. it. I enjoy it more now than I ever you did should, yeah. as a kid. It's Honestly, wonderful. same. Yeah, same. But no, I like I was never allowed to watch. Like my parents were really strict about my language, so like I wasn't allowed to watch anything that said "butt" or like "crap" even, even or butt? stuff like that. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to say the word "butt" in front of my parents until like seventh or eighth grade, I think. Oh, Lordy. Yeah, it was crazy. So like, but Ed, Ed, is even Eddie, what do you like, call, what do you say? Your behind like, or your bottom hind quarters? Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> behind the quarters. <laughs> and we end up back on the topic of butt stuff. Butt stuff again. <laughs> why? Why? We, we've got a fixation. We just love. What is, we've got a fixation, guys. What is this saying about us? Booties. <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> booties. <laughs> Big booties. Booties bottom. Booties here. Booties there. Booties everywhere. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> on a more serious topic, I said if it came up, it came up. Now it's coming I think, up. I think What's you guys would booties? appreciate this. I've come to. T- okay. Long story short. I've come to terms with the fact that I think I have some trust issues that have been like kind of messing with my internal world. And I feel like I've recently made some significant progress on those. And it's been like a hell yeah, that internal shift, man. It just, Uh it completely alters your sense of reality. And long story short, I've narrowed it down to like five major events that have happened to me like in the past few years. Happened for me, happened to me, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. So Tony narrowed Robbins, it down. shout out. It's impressive. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So I got it down to like five things and I was like, okay, so this is why this whole like constantly questioning people, it's not everybody, but like some certain people that yeah, probably shouldn't be. Totally. You know, like it's like you're you're thinking about putting more trust into them and you're having a hard time doing so. But I feel like I've really made some like significant progress on that. Oh yeah. And man, trust is a weird topic. It's um Trust. Like it's, it's like trust. revolves around like honesty and like loyalty and trust mm. towards just like different relationships you have, like uh, friendships, like tr- or trust in yourself. Or what do you mean? Not really trust, trust in myself. Exactly. It yeah. was more so like other people. All I can all I can rely on is me mm. kind of deal. Yeah. But now it's and there were a few friends I like had no question about trust. Honestly, both of you guys like. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, there were a few friends that like it. It wasn't even thought about. Secondly, but. There were some other people that I would just constantly be questioning them, and I felt like it was unnecessary. And I feel like it was only because of some things that happened to me in my past that made me mm-hmm. more cynical. Because I feel like I was an optimist that was kind of betrayed, at least subjectively felt betrayed. Felt betrayed, yeah. So that led to me just feel like, feeling like skeptical cynical that about Gagatron's like other people. coming back to get you. That Gagatron, baby. <laughs> oh, God. That Gagatron no, I'm just sorry. did that. I'm sorry. Oh, back to the <laughs> Oh, jeez. It was it, it was making its way back up. I put it. I, it went it went in. Now it's making its way back up. You don't trust the Garga Gargatron. Do you? I don't yeah, trust. The, yeah. I would trust That's my the gag biggest reflex, trust issue, yeah. which I learned I had before this podcast. I didn't know what a gag <laughs> reflex until this yeah, podcast. literally about sixty seconds before we started rolling. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anyways, pick back up where you were. Yeah, that's pretty much. I, I just think trust is a really interesting topic because I never had a problem with it way back when. Mm. And then, long story short, a few things happened to me in life where I felt like people turned their backs on me, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah. But I also feel like this is a time in our lives where people are kind of selfish. People kind of move oh, with the majority. 100%. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of like social barriers that make things weird. And also overthinking on my end, mm-hmm. but just just a lot of variables that uh, it's made me like really think about the concept of trust. Because to put trust in somebody else, it's at, for a while I was like, no, you can't do that. Like, you just stay away from even trying to trust anybody, at least to like some degree. But I think that left like the end result of that is like internally it makes you feel really clogged and kind of bitter, honestly, mm, yeah, and really cynical. So it's uh, I feel like cleaning up that internal world has made. Mm-hmm just made my perception of reality and this world and myself just feel like way more pure and just happy. And whenever those thoughts of like, can I trust them come up, which some people you, you shouldn't trust at all. Right. Right. But, uh, whenever those thoughts come up, I just feel, I feel a lot better. Like I feel mm-hmm. a lot better. I'm just like, okay, let's eradicate that. Let's forget about that. That's going to take me down a negative spiral of thoughts. And then now I feel, yeah, I just feel a little bit, internally cleansed. I feel like I erased a little negative part of my internal being. So. There you go. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. For sure. That's cool. Yeah, trust is a super interesting topic. It's funny because you talked about like trust with other people. And one of the things that 
if I have any trust issues at all, it's with trusting myself. Mm. Like, sure. like in what way? In a lot of different ways. Um, anything from uh, just taking care of what I need to take care of from mm-hmm. a day-to-day Just like knowing basis. you'll get done what you need to get done. Exactly, kind of stuff thing. like that. Yeah. A lot of times I feel like I struggle trust myself with that, which mm-hmm. is obviously like a motivation issue yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Oh, they're, yeah, mm-hmm. and inextricably linked. Right, right. But uh, also the uh, whole idea of trust of um, basically just trusting myself not to care about, uh, not not to care in a, not caring way, like a not give a shit about anything way, but just not care about uh, all the little things in my mind that gets me like stuck. Mm. You know, all the little mm. things of whether it's what other people think or uh, That's what I think about myself. Yeah, yeah. Even. You know, it's very yeah. So in loopy, a sense, but... you're you're wanting to put trust in yourself to like you know prioritize properly. total trust in myself would be the goal for sure. Absolutely, because yeah. when you have total trust in yourself then you don't even feel, one, the need to feel like you have to trust anyone else. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, obviously, like, I have have tons of people I can trust. Tons of my friends I have so much trust in, for sure. But, uh, yeah, like, those trusts don't even really cross my mind as much as, yeah, like I said, trust in myself. Mm. Mm. That's really uh, interesting. complete what I need to complete and think how I would want to think. Yeah. And, you know. I've never never considered it that way. Like, I've, I've never linked trust... With that feeling, I guess you know, like it's always outward, less uh, yeah, less yeah, trust I of guess. yourself, but like trusting other people. That's how I think for you as well. That's that's sort of an interesting way of separating, you know, like your yourself from your sort of like instinctual reactions. Okay, yeah. you know, does that make sense? Kind of. Uh, in some ways, I, I just may not know exactly what you I, particularly it, mean. It feels like I don't know. You're you're separating that thing. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're kind of separating it into like two selves. You know, okay. you're saying like trust yeah, in cause, yourself. Because if you trust in yourself, it's like there has to be something that's trusting and something. Yeah, that's being yeah, trusted. exactly. Yeah, it, no, it sort it's of totally inherently split, indicates like two parties. A split thing. Yeah, yeah. I would like it just to dissolve into <clears throat> neither. Right. Two or even one, right? Just like an existent thing, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, for sure, there definitely is like a split in my mind when I think that way, mm-hmm. and I do admit that it's like a not an error, but at least how I want to think. Yeah, I consider it and an I, error I, I, in I thought, feel like I've I've but, looked at things that way, like retrospectively. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I look back, I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have like let myself do that, or I probably shouldn't have you know let myself feel this way or whatever Mm -hmm. but i very rarely you know thinking retrospectively about how i think about the future yeah (laughs) if that makes sense i don't typically think like "Mm, i don't know if i can trust myself to not do or or to do you know or take care of whatever Mm -hmm. so would you say alex like do you think in the present moment and the future you struggle to trust yourself or kind of like james was saying like whenever you reflect Right on. It it depends on, I think, both, for sure. But it depends on the day. Like, for instance, today, I've actually felt pretty good, like, about everything, mm-hmm. honestly. But yesterday, I honestly felt kind of weird, and I felt sort of, like, almost trust issues with myself, but also with, uh, in some weird way, with, like, the entire aspect of reality mm-hmm. itself. Like, it's just like, how can I trust reality when it looks like this? And then how can I trust myself to be in such a reality mm. and act like this? You know, yada, yada, yada. I'm not being very sp- specific, but maybe you can see kind of what I mean. Yeah, no, no, no. Conceptually, I definitely feel but, So do you think whenever like, you're talking about reality as a whole, like, mm-hmm. do you think that comes from like a fatalistic or a cynical or a nihilistic like point of view? Whenever I don't trust in myself slash that or whatever then yeah for sure i think it does come from a a place of uh seeing everything is uh, like pointless or empty or things like that empty and not a good way you know for mm-hmm. sure but you know it always usually turns around again i know? wonder i, I always never... wonder if that's like how you were feeling that day cognitively Mm-hmm. Like what kind of neurotransmitters, or if you got more serotonin, more dopamine, what your chemical probably... balance yeah. is happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think regardless of what happens in your uh, in your mind, in the you know, in the mental worlds or whatever inside your, in yeah, in the whole thing that you can't call physical or whatever. I think there's always a physical uh, yeah. correlation. Yeah, like there, totally. you could always totally. be able to. 
you won't be able to quantify it exactly. It's beyond words, whatever you want to call this. But still yeah. tangible. But but yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. could be able to be like, oh yes, you know, there will be a correlation to how you feel in your brain chemistry. Totally, yeah, always. I've, I've been always. thinking about yeah. that a lot lately. Like yeah. when I have off days or or like down days or whatever, I look back and think like, I I go back and try to analyze like what did I do like earlier today or like the day before, you mm-hmm. know, like what did I consume both in terms of like intellectual content or media or whatever, as well as, you know, what did I eat? Like, did right. I feed myself well Absolutely. yesterday? Did, did I, I sleep well? Did I sleep mm-hmm. well? Did I like fucking, did I drink too much or right. like whatever else? And They're all factors. Nine times out of 10, when I go look back, I'm like, oh shit. Like mm-hmm. that was probably the thing that is making me feel all fucked up today. One of you asked me about this thing on my head. Uh, yeah, yeah earlier. I asked you about that. And, it wasn't uh, me because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's good that you say that, like about uh, how like all the factors that go in, like what did you eat, how did you sleep, yada yada yada. What thoughts did you have? Uh, because it's uh, I mean obviously everybody already knows that all these things are connected. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like all this, like it looks kind of rough, like dark in some spots. Mm-hmm. The sun is from the sun. I did get burned yeah. at some point this summer. But also I've had like uh, like it's been oily and like mm. little pressure under the skin, almost like like I've had a pimple or two. Yeah, yeah. And the kind of acne or whatever that's under the skin but doesn't volcano right, right. out, you know, and it just yeah. sort of hangs around and, and it just like shit. feels really rough and like, yeah, right. pressure like and you it's, said. And I, I think I've deducted that it's because of one, how I'm eating right now. I've been eating a lot of fast food yeah. just because of the moving process yep. and I just yep. recently have been starting to get groceries again. And uh, so I think I've been eating like shit and that's one factor. And then also, I've, like I said, uh, from the me moving and stuff, I've been really stressed out, more stressed mm-hmm. out than I usually am. Yep. And I think that is where most of it even comes from. Because I usually, I haven't had any forehead or, you know, no acne problems anything. in a long yeah. time. Yeah, like It's yeah. been years and years. In high school, I remember getting in a lot. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it hasn't really been a thing the past few years until recently. And I think it really is just from the stress, mm-hmm. you know. You think that sure. stress causes like a chemical imbalance and then... Yeah, I think they're related. I, I think I can't say that one causes the other or the other yeah. causes the other. I think they arise together in some. They you know, do, and I'm I'm sure there's there's like way for sure more of an internal thing going on as well. But like, I don't know about you guys, but like I'm a like I'm a stress sweater. You know, like mm, when like I'm stressed sweat, or anxious, I sweat, out. and like that's gonna make your skin more oily. Mm. And like you know, if you're only taking one shower a day, and then you're stressed all day, right, you know yeah. you're gonna be oily when you go to bed. <laughs> sure, yeah. And then that stuff's just like soaking into your face all night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there always seems to be always a reason, a clear reason, totally for all of it. And then yeah, those reasons can be connected, and mm-hmm. rise together. It seems. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I know but, if I'm if my face feels really oily and gross, then I I internally feel a lot more like grimy too. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it affects your mind state yeah. of the whole thing. Your, your outward presentation, you know, I always used to think it was bullshit, but like when your teachers would always tell you like, you know, you got to dress up for this presentation or whatever because it makes you feel better about yourself. Like, you know, like I said, I always used to think it was, you know, totally ridiculous, no, but it's, real. it's totally Very true. Real. Like your outward presentation, I think totally has a, a you know, a reflection on your inner self as well i was super skeptical of that as well because there's an expression in yeah. sports like look good feel good play good mm-hmm. and I, I yeah i agree I, I agree with that it makes a lot of sense like even today i was wearing i think i was wearing a hoodie and t- uh shorts and i i walked back home then i switched into like my work stuff mm-hmm. and i I'm, I'm not gonna compare the two on like how i felt but i jeff def- i definitely felt different walking i walked to and from the same spot and I just felt different on my mm. walk there. I was like, wow, this, I was thinking that today, just how I dress and how I express myself has some, maybe as a social animal, I'm anticipating how others are perceiving me. Yeah. Mm. And then, I, I think that is absolutely accurate. And then you just feel better internally. It's weird. Mm-hmm. That's why I think fashion, like I'm not super like into fashion, but I mm-hmm. think it's, I think it's kind of cool. Says the man wearing a fedora. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think fashion's a fantastic. It's just like a fashion is extremely powerful about like oh, who yeah. you think you are and then how you feel. Like as we've been talking about, for and sure. then that's going to reflect on how you present yourself, mm. which isn't everything, but it's very, very, very important. It's a portion, right? Yeah, no doubt. 
like there was either this week or last week. There's been a lot of weeks recently where I feel like I'm like, man, I haven't showered in a couple days. I need yeah. to shower. <laughs> but there was one one of these weeks, or maybe it was even this week. Gosh, I don't even know. But it had been like three and a half days since I showered. Damn. And that's it's fine normally, but since I work outside, I get real sweaty all day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And if I'm not at a on a camping trip or doing some cool thing out in nature, or whatever, right? It's a little different if you're just like days living everyday life, going sweating, to school, yeah. or, or like to work or whatever, yeah. and like running your errands and stuff. For sure. And I smelled myself, and I was just like, oof. And yeah. I felt like you said, <laughs> grimy in the mind as well. I was yeah. just like, I feel grimy and gross, and it doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know? And then after I took a shower, yeah. Sure enough, everything's clean and reality's new. And you know. Yeah. Does anybody ever like purposefully get a little grimy though? Yeah, I mean sometimes. What do you mean? Like, see what you're saying. Maybe every you're every once in a while, else. like if I know like I'm gonna be in here like working all day long on something, I will like. You know, usually I start every day with a shower. Like, that's the very first thing I do when I wake up. Like, I'll get out and, like, walk Ella, you know, for 30 minutes and then come back and take a shower and yeah. be, like, clean all day. And then, pause. Good? I think that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, yeah, and then I'll, uh, so that's, like, the normal day. But there are some days where, like, if I know I'm going to be, like, deep into a project and, like, kind of purposefully not seeing anyone and just, like, burying myself in here and just like being in the fucking zone like i will purposefully not shower because there's sort of just like there there's a happy medium where you're like a good level of grimy yeah no like, for sure i don't know it, it i think i, I see what, what you're saying exactly. do you think it's yeah. interesting. do you think it kind of motivates you to it, it's almost it shows some tangible results of hard work like maybe. i'm working hard now yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, so let's do this maybe because kind of you know? i i feel really good after i'm gross and sweaty after a good workout or after yeah after a, a good workout, good soccer I'm game down. or something yeah. it just feels like oh. yeah i mean i'm not i personally don't really like to sweat most of the time i like, prefer it's, not it's to. one of I the most uncomfortable to. things to me but like if i can just be like you know in here you know, after not showering for a day or two and just, like, put a hat on and, like, pull my fucking hair back and just, like, get in the zone. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that, like, kind of helps me focus in a yeah, weird interesting. way. No, yeah. I, I believe that for <laughs> That's sure. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know how it works, but mm -hmm. it's a thing. I've never thought about that. I've yeah. never thought about it. Yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense. But like I said, like, that's, that's if I know, like, I'm not going to be seeing anyone. Like, I'm just by myself. Like, it doesn't matter, you know. Well, there's no way you're the only one. That's really interesting. No, That's interesting. no, I, oh, like I don't the only think person so. Experiences I don't think that? so. No, yeah. there's no way. I think I understand it on a lot of levels for sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. especially yeah. like this is also kind of weird. But like, if I have a really good day of work, you know, one day, and you know, I'll because of the nature of my work, sometimes it's like crazy deadlines, and I have to work crazy hours, and I only get like three hours of sleep, and then you know, I'll work until like midnight or 1 a.m. and then be back in here at like 5 in the morning or something. Mm. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah, totally. And a lot of times I will purposefully not shower after that because it almost feels like it would like shift my mindset so much that it would sort of like take me, like I feel like it would almost potentially break sort of that like creative flow state that I've established. If you took a previously. shower. Yeah. yeah, that that totally makes sense yeah. to me. It's kind of yeah. like wiping the slate clean. It's like I'm not In a ready. Way. And like to most wipe times, don't get me yet. wrong. Most times, that's a good thing. But I if think. you're already rolling, you know? then you yeah. might as well keep it going yeah. without wiping. Yeah, anything. yeah, no, that makes sense for sure. This is really interesting to me. That's really cool. <laughs> that's really cool. It's kind of weird and fucking <laughs> gross. Well, everybody's bit. got their like. Any creative <laughs> has their weird kind of esoteric mm -hmm. rituals. It's it's also nice sometimes, uh, like. Uh, I honestly haven't done it in a while, but if you like the liberation of being very dirty, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, yeah. But I, you, I can get but that. it always has to get, get past that. a certain point. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like if like you get I, too fucked up and for, you have to get naked for yeah. whatever reason, it's always rough until you just let go right. and you're just right. like, doesn't yeah. even matter. I don't care. No, for either. for some <laughs> reason I've, I've been taking I. You know, I, I grew up, like, kind of out in the country, so, like, I'm used to, like, yard work and, like, outdoor stuff and all this because my, like, the house I grew up in was on, like, 20 acres of land, you know. So that was basically my childhood job forever as long as I lived with my parents was mowing the lawn and weed eating and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and I always hated that stuff. But this is like the first summer. I'm, you know, 24 now. This is the first time. Well, uh, it's been like probably six years since the last time I lived in my parents' house, and this is like the first time that I've actually like taken a little bit of joy in like the maintenance of yard work and stuff. And there have been times where I've gone out and like mowed and weed eated like so hard that like I've come in and taken off my shoes and my socks and I've got like dirt caked between my bare toes. And it's just like that's a satisfying feeling you when you're like literally, it. yeah, dirt, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, it off dirty your legs. down like smell your beneath nuts. your layers, you know, <laughs> smell your nuts. <laughs> Just do a nice little wipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get what you mean, though. It's like delayed gratification. It's that uh, delayed gratification of being able to get in the shower so you appreciate it more. Mm. And also just the... I understand that, yeah, yeah. for sure. The it's feedback like, oh, of... I'm it, it is sort of feeling a of hard feedback. work. Yeah, yeah. I do the delayed gratification more with food. I feel like Ooh. I was just like, oh, but if I wait till after, uh, then so that food will be... Fifty yeah. percent better. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be hungrier. I'll be that much. I'll better. be hungrier and it'll taste better. Yeah, yeah for sure. See, I'm I'm I'll be more that of much the type. more desperate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm more of the type where I just like forget to eat, and like eating really kind of becomes sometimes. just like a chore. Or I'm just like, give me the sustenance. Like, let's go. It's you weird know? you say that because I go through different. Uh, I don't know phases. Yeah. Just in life, it's maybe yeah, it's yeah. like a cycle because I've experienced multiple phases of. Uh, eating lots and just food always sounding good mm, and then mm. also the same thing like you were saying of yeah just like uh oh i gotta eat like yeah i feel like it's a relatively <laughs> new development for me too but like recently i've just been like i don't care really like what it is i mean like obviously you know i don't want it to be absolute dog shit and the I food don't, yeah you're talking about? like yeah. i don't want it to taste super bad but i don't necessarily <laughs> care how it tastes and I'm like not seeking you don't really care if it is taste. literally dog shit. I'm like yeah I literally just want to like <laughs> kill the pain and get that energy boost that comes from a full meal and then like move on to the next my thing. energy yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 interesting yeah I'm I'm very different from both of you I pretty much eat all the time every yeah day. I could yeah. imagine <laughs> that you'd be a pretty good eater but you probably work out more than yeah that, that's James, another thing you know? I was gonna say like that helps even, a lot I like, feel like I, I honestly I'm I have to be the least active out of both of you. Like, you work for the park. If I wasn't You're working out, at the park, yeah. though, you would probably Fair. beat me. You're outside <laughs> all day, every day. You work out all the time. But, like, I literally, when I go to my day job, I sit in front of a computer screen all day. Yeah, for And sure. then I come home and You I look work. more fit than me, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> what, you look, what are you talking about? We're, like, we're like the same fit. stature, pretty I much. I guess, so. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and then I come home, and I, I work here, and... I'm sitting in front of a screen and like there's very little, very, very little physical activity in my life right now. At least mm. you're working your brain. So that, that's interesting. That's a, a connection I haven't made, but it is, that's, you know, potentially. Uh, Do you think that's what it is? It, it Maybe very lack well could of be. physical activity? Very well could be. Yeah. But even mentally, not, you're burning a ton of calories, I'm sure, just by working that much. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I know one game of Sudoku. I think if you play Sudoku for an hour, you burn like 90 calories. Do you actually burn Wait, calories mentally? From yeah, yeah. I have never heard that. Yeah, the, I, I mean, the brain consumes like I would assume so on crazy some like minuscule level, but I never thought of like No, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean like uh, sizable obviously amount like compared to calories physical, provide the energy yeah. for your body to function, so your brain function is going to contribute to a little bit too, of that, yeah, but I had no idea it was that on it was that like, level, yeah. like 90 calories from an hour. That's, That's nuts. nuts. Just sitting there, so completely how many, sedentary. How many how many calories do you burn an hour? Like if you're if you're jogging, like how many calories an hour do you burn? Oh, do you have wow. any idea? It probably be I'd guess in the thousands. <laughs> I bet. Oh, okay, that if you're big of a difference. Jogging a continuous hour. So it would probably roughly be like if you know. jogged for an hour straight, it would yeah. roughly be like ten times the calories burned of like playing an hour of Sudoku. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's safe okay. to say. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, May, probably I don't know much about minimum. calories in yeah. general. I really don't. <laughs> I've learned about them before. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Like, I don't know how many calories is burned from what, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I know how much calories some foods contain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Only because they say on the packaging. Only because they yeah. say on the packaging. Hmm. What else you guys want to talk about? 
I was about to ask you what else you got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're usually, the, I you're usually the host some... here. This is your show. Oh, oh shit. Like, now I'm, I'm <laughs> put on the spot. Damn. I got to come up with Damn. topics. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind. Well, I'll tell you what's coming to mind with me. These are amazing for the Still pod. The I don't know phones. how many pods you've done with anything like Jordan's got his whole own setup now that's what yeah I haven't been I haven't seen your whole new setup so I'll have to check it out yeah it's cool have you seen the new house no I don't think I've seen the new house table two hangout areas we got podcast room obviously bumper pool beer pong we got this balance (laughs) board type of thing sounds like the place to be yeah yeah I remember that thing (laughs) it's a cool I I really like my new house that's cool Um, and who are you living with again uh, I'm living with. Two, I don't know if you know Grant. You might know Grant, but I don't think you know the other two. Right on. Yeah, the yeah, main group of guys too. Here's is Joe, and that's it. What is he doing? Yeah, is it, yeah, where's absolutely. he living? I uh, he moved back to Kansas City. Oh, he's in KC now. Mm-hmm. Oh. Does he visit when he uh, um, pop up? Yeah, he hasn't come back yeah. too much longer. But on the topic of Joe, it's cool to have friends that you've known for a while that like you genuinely really want the best for. Because yeah, that dude's yeah. doing well. He's like, he's grown as a person. I he's totally grown up a lot. Yeah. You know, definitely. like, is, is we've he never even had the lawn service? One before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. It's totally cool, yeah. though. It's, um, we all went to that uh, Tie and Timber, and Timber yeah, uh, yeah. bar. Yeah. That's them. the only time I've ever met Joe. For sure. Yeah. That is right. Yeah. yeah. Good he's nights. a great guy. Good times. Yeah. You're right, though. Even though I've never hung out with him one on one, I feel very, I don't know, just in my mind, at least, I'm full support of Joe. You know, yeah, like, totally. You know, just like I'm behind him, no matter what. Even though we've never hung out, but I'm, I'm Team Joe. Yeah. I'm Team Joe. It's just you know, Team Joe. It's like easy it. to tell, even if you haven't hung out with a person a lot. You can tell, uh, almost in a strange way, that you like. I don't know. You just like them. Yeah. It's weird to just like people. It's just like there's people that you resonate with everything from their physical behavior to their yeah. ideas and you can you can say. spend 20 minutes with that person and think very highly of them too oh yeah mm-hmm. and and yeah. even less you know it's, it's one of those less, things yeah. where people talk about like i for some reason like specifically you know employers are coming to mind you know people say within like the first 30 seconds of an interview like your employer has pretty much subconsciously made up their mind as to whether or not they're going to hire you Snap. i believe that just based believe off that. that very yeah Minimal, they like you know, they catch the vibe, reaction. they catch yeah, the vibe, yeah, and if totally. they resonate with it, then they're totally, down. they're yeah. The like but. your body language and the way you present yourself, mm-hmm. and just like that first handshake, it tells or, so or much. Else. Yeah. It really does. It like, snap does. judgment, snap judgment, snap judgment. Snap absolutely, judgments. Yeah. honestly, absolutely. I bet even the first 10 seconds they have a very strong <laughs> like, opinion on you. <laughs> yeah, literally, the first yeah, no, time probably. they lay eyes on you. Like yeah, they're, they're like, oh, this you know, when when they see you drive up, you know, if they're looking out the window and they see you pull up, they're like. Already making those already those, those judgments impressions are, are setting off they like realize it or not. off your car and like if you're rolling in with your music bumping yeah, and stuff not, like all that's all gonna it. affect it yeah it's super, if he doesn't like it at first maybe you can salvage jerk. it when yeah. you meet him <laughs> yeah <laughs> try to be good I yeah. love whenever yeah. my snap judgments of somebody are proven wrong those are mm. always fun yeah they're like yeah. wow I didn't know they would be like totally this, you know, yeah for sure totally I guess it goes both ways there's some there, people I thought were really dope. Like yeah. right off the bat. And yeah. Then, and then you're like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. And then the exact opposite. That's always a good surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's true. It, it's kind of satisfying in a way when your snap judgment proves to be right, but almost, it, it's almost satisfying in a disappointing yeah. way, you know? But when someone surprises you, I guess it you depends like that, what like your snap judgment that, is of them. Yeah. You know, if it's like good and definitely. you're proven de- right, yeah, you're like, depends. I knew this is the person it we'll have to talk to. Yeah. 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 It just makes me think of like a like a party. If you go to a party and you don't know anybody or whatever, mm-hmm. it's almost like, uh, yeah, just judging, walking into a room and just seeing people's body language and how they look and how they act, even just for a second, mm-hmm. probably plays a huge uh, is a huge factor into who you're gonna go and talk to first. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But so yeah, it's interesting that uh, yeah, it could go either way if it turns out to be. Like your snap judgment is right, and then mm. you're like, hell yeah, let's let's party. And then if it's wrong, then yeah, it could yeah. be very disappointing. <laughs> it's like goodbye. Let's party. Yeah, like, yeah, they seemed cool, like that, but then uh, they that, were a that, dick uh, that gif of Kanye where he's just standing around. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what you're yeah, talking about. Around, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see it captioned all the time when it's like when you smoke with a new group of people and within like 20 minutes you realize you're never going to smoke with them again. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. Just yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe get tossed around. I love I love how 
people know about the same memes, even though it's just like, dude, it's, yeah, it's such around. a crazy culture. And like, memes it, are insane. It has influenced the way <laughs> that our generation communicates, just acts, yeah, in general, oh and God. thinks, even. yeah. Huge the, influence on everything. The crazy thing that I have noticed lately, just like amongst, do, do either of you guys have siblings? Yeah, I got two. I have one. Older or younger? Younger. Older. How much younger? Uh, 18 months and five years. Okay, gotcha. Um, so my siblings are two and four years younger than me. Okay, absolutely. Um, I have two brothers who are four years younger than me and my sister is two years younger than me. And not so much between me and my sister, but between me and my brothers, you know, just four years. That's a very small gap. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's already, like, a communicational, technological, like, cultural gap. You know, really? like, in the way that you think about, like, between, like, people our age and our parents. You know, where it's like, they just don't get it kind of attitude. And, like, I totally get the same sense with people who are born in, like, fucking 97 and 98. You know, that's only three or four years younger than us. Yeah, but for there's sure. such a gap, and like a lot of them are on like such a different, more involved social it's media meme yeah. type culture that, like, you know, it's already to the point where like they're making references to stuff, and like, you know, even as much as just like using text slang and and abbreviations and stuff. And I was like, what the. Mm -hmm. is this that like, is crazy I have, to think like, about it's almost difficult to communicate with this person because I, they, we're you know they're referencing things and like it's the like, I don't know what you're the memes about. and the the language and everything is so embedded in their communication style mm. that are just like you're just like i don't even know yeah it's bizarre. that's funny yeah and even us like we're a little bit quicker paced than somebody five years older than us oh totally it's crazy how much yeah. there's probably more of a gap I mean, I don't within know. five I, years than I feel any like point I in sense, human history i feel like i sense less of a gap between you know us like 24 25 year olds and 30 year olds than i do between myself and like a 20 or like 19 year old do you think that has to do with your frame of reference being the older individual maybe because your analysis maybe, might, they I, might feel the same way. I also feel like maybe it's been a more recent thing, but I feel like, you know, very rapidly within the past few years, kids are getting technology earlier. Oh, you know, for sure. Because yeah. it's just so, you know, rapidly, New shit's coming out exponentially then, faster. Yeah. Like stuff is becoming more widespread and technology is more affordable, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, me and a 30 year old, like that 30 year old probably got their first cell phone when they were like, you know, junior high, early high school, something like that. Yeah. About the same as me, you know, someone who but was born in 98 to 2000, awesome. you know, that range, they had a phone in their, or an iPad in their hands from the time they were like, you know, eight to 10 years old. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah. And that number, that age is just going to keep dropping. Yeah. So I, I think that that has a big thing to do with it, you know? For sure. Um, just more people, access to yeah, everything. Yeah. People who are, four or five years younger than us um, have been exposed to this kind of immersive technology for, you know, maybe like six to eight years longer than mm -hmm. us. Yeah. You know something that two things that come to mind that our generation does not have, we're kind of impartial to, some people are kind of into it, but not that many. Like most are in the minority. One being YouTubers, because people five years younger than us, they are bananas man they are bananas about this youtube craze mm. and then tiktok as well that's another social media yeah, platform no, that for sure all those kids like a few yeah, years younger which, yeah into. It's, it's crazy to me like i i know nothing about tiktok except Same. that their ads are so fucking i only annoying. know it. <laughs> <I'm> just, like <laughs> yeah, i want to get rid sure. of them but <laughs> yeah like snapchat they always add like, yeah yeah throw ads snapchat and instagram primarily. i only know like a handful of people that have tiktok i feel yeah Unless I, a lot of people are I just even, trying to tell me i don't think i even like if I do have friends who like have and use TikTok, Very I don't few. know them. I don't I know. know who it is. They well, don't talk about it. It's Snapchat funny because a few days ago in one of my classes uh, that we we got mm. on the topic of TikTok and from like a marketing point of view, mm. and the entire class like he he asked the question, "Do any of you guys have TikTok?" And not a single person raised their hand, whether they didn't want to admit it because they would be in the minority. It, I mean, that's possible, but not a single person in that classroom. Had mm. TikTok, I guarantee if you were to go back five years younger, so even just freshman in college, freshman oh. in college, 
or maybe like senior I, yeah, in I high bet school. That number was exponentially I, larger. I bet it's at least. I bet it. I, I don't know, but yeah, I bet maybe <laughs> half the class. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's super interesting. Now I know that you used to be big into Vine. Mm-hmm. So like, are have you familiarized yeah. yourself with TikTok at all? Like, do you know how they compare? Because um, like, they I don't know like, much TikTok about it. Seems like, like there's way more uh, effects and stuff you can do with TikTok. At oh, least, okay. at least from okay. what I've seen, like. So right. a lot. It's funny because a lot of TikToks they advertise like on Snapchat. It's funny. I would always see those and be like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, it's mm-hmm. not that good or whatever. And then I have a friend that actually showed me some of the TikToks she made, and they were like super cool. Like they were actually really cool. And I was just like, "Why are they advertising all the shitty TikToks? Like they're yeah. not that special." <laughs> it's like whatever. And then uh, and some of the TikToks are really annoying. Like. Uh, you know what I'm talking about on Snapchat where uh, there will be like a girl and a sign like "Sorry boys," but and it's like yeah, 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 yeah. walk away nah, nah, yeah. nah, that song or whatever, and then like there's like ten variations of that mm. that they would advertise, and I was like, mm-hmm. what? And after I saw my friend's TikToks, which were actually really cool and the effects that she did and stuff, okay, I was just like. You know, why are they advertising all the really ones that aren't impressive yeah. at all? They're really yeah. not impressive yeah. at all. Corny, corny. But some of the TikToks can be really cool. Um, it seems like there's way more effects than Vine. Um, but I also I, don't know where Vine is right but now. I, well, Vine is dead. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Wait, the, they got sold or what? It like, it, off? It just, like, you can't even download, you can't download it? Or what, but yeah, like it literally does not exist anymore. Because you used to be, you used to have a lot of followers on Vine, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think like, I reached like uh, 40K status. and then, yeah, I had That's like a lot of people. 10 million <laughs> loops, something like that. Oh my 10 God. million loops. Jeez. That's nuts. <laughs> that's a lot so of that, That's these, a crazy man. number to ponder. Yeah. One 10 million? Things, yeah. One sure. Vine got half of those loops, though. I remember it, you telling actually, me that. Which yeah. Vine was it? What, what yeah, what was that so, video? What I was going for, I don't even think it was my funniest. Like, I don't think it was my most creative or funniest. But yeah, I, I remember waking up one on. day and I was like, my hair is everywhere. And I was kind of going for the appeal. And I this is not my favorite sense of humor. Mm-hmm. But I was going for relatability on a, a myriad of, of levels, I guess you'd say. Yeah. So I found two songs that were in pop culture at the time, really, all over the radio and whatnot. And then... I, oh, what was it? Oh, then I related it to people going to school because I, I'm like, okay, this is going to relate to a massive amount of people. Mm-hmm. So, oh, what was the vine? It was in the beginning of the semester versus the end of the semester. And the very beginning of the semester, I'm like, I got my hair like combed and um, I, I think I had like a nicer shirt on and I'm being very attentive, like pretending right, right. to like write down. And then it's, it was that Rihanna song. It's like, work, 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 work. <laughs> uh, and then... Um, yeah, I believe and, that song is called Work. Is it? I, I think you're right. <laughs> Actually, I have a conspiracy work. theory about that song, by oh, the way. Oh, shit. But, uh, oh, lordy. <laughs> but, and then I did like some Alessia Cara song. I was like, and I ask myself, what am I doing here? And then I <laughs> and then I looked for like a dramatic exit to like finish off the vine with like some humor appeal. Mm-hmm. Even though I personally didn't find it like hilarious, I just thought it was like an equation yeah. that would maybe yeah. work relatable and, um, to everybody exactly yeah. relatable in pop culture relatable in the aspect that this and, is how a lot and, of people feel about their attitude towards school yeah and i feel like it also appeals to like the largest user group of the platform yeah yeah absolutely and also uh so the the way i got it to go viral is i i that was the equation i was going for that was the appeal and and then, like the the ending, I like slam my head on the table, and my hair's all messy and stuff. Mm, and gotcha. it's it's kind of like symbolizes like you're on top of your shit at the beginning of the semester, and then at the end of the oh, semester, for sure. and by the like, end you're fucking you, no you're motivation, run and you're just like trying to make it to the end. Exactly, yeah. and that one caught on big. Huh? But uh, yeah. what I did is I I found I got a big list of like Twitter accounts, and I sent it into like ten of them, uh, just some pretty popular accounts, and what these Twitter accounts are looking for is content. Like they're looking mm-hmm. for constant content. So I was like, maybe I'll just send it in and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it was like my first time trying it, but I sent it in to like 10 accounts. One of them posted and then all the other accounts started stealing it because they saw it performing uh, well. Oh, shit. Yeah. And it was like also at a very relatable time in the semester. So um, I think it was like end of the semester. So it was like extremely prevalent so everybody was retweeting and favoring and whatnot. And then mm-hmm. that post yeah. alone got up to like 5 million loops. And then it got Damn. posted on Facebook Jeez. on some account that hit like 500,000. And 
I'd like every once in a while people will tag me in it too at like on Instagram or something like some popular Instagram account will post it. But it's cool, man. Like I, yeah. I, yeah. there's this shirt ha, that I have. Have you ever had anyone come up to you like in public and just be like, You're the vine guy? It or used like, to happen on campus at Missouri State. Really? Like, I could see that. I, I see think that. in it, the there were like two semesters where I was known as like the vine guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think it within those two semesters maybe like 10 people on campus mm -hmm. like like more yeah. than i ever would have anticipated did you get any pay from vine when yeah i made like that? 400 dollars through like some That's no out. shit yeah like uh in a certain was, month or like the whole some time, advertiser or? hit me up and they were wanting me to do advertisements mm -hmm. and i think it was like a hundred dollars oh, what was it i think it was 200 dollars for the initial fifty thousand loops and then every thirty thousand loops after that was a hundred, and I got it up to like one hundred eighty thousand nice. loops cool. or something like that. Oh yeah, wow. that's great. That's yeah, pretty sweet. Have you ever? Uh, do you have a? You have a YouTube, don't you? Or do yeah, you know? yeah. Do you have you ever made money off of YouTube or not? Nah? Monetizing YouTube has gotten a lot it's more trickier, difficult, right? Yeah, because yeah. it used to be about used two dollars every thousand views, something roughly like uh -huh. that. Uh, now you have to have you have to hit a requirement, and it's I think it's revolves around watch time. And it's monthly watch so time they, or yearly they have watch, to watch time. Like, oh, oh, okay. It's that's like different. forty thousand hours or something within mm. a year, or something mm. like that. I didn't know because I know with like music streaming platforms, you know, like on Spotify, you only have to listen through like the first thirty seconds of a song for the artist to get the full royalty. Oh, for that song. So I thought that's what you meant. Like, you know, if someone watches the first sixty seconds or whatever of your video, you're gonna get the full like the royalty as if they had watched the full video. Mm -hmm. that would be ideal that'd be nice <laughs> but no it's like a, yeah. it's kind of like a prereq almost so you have to gotcha. have this amount of watch time within a year's time span before you can monetize yes so like you can't monetize whatsoever okay. yeah, yeah. until you reach this threshold and mm. then you, then all the additional views you get on top of that that's yeah. when you start making money right on. and you have to have like a thousand subscribers as well yeah it didn't mm -hmm. used to always be that way but yeah, I remember it's gotten a lot. Is. Well, again, it's like, like as it's grown, they have to regulate it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're like everybody can just hop on it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. And like months. we were talking about, fucking everybody wants to be a YouTuber now. Everybody An really does. Yeah. Everybody I got in the younger but generation would, too. You know, being a YouTuber would be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do is make yeah, videos. Yeah, like a sweet gig. I just don't feel like doing that. Yeah. I don't know too many people our age that are like all about like I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber, but she's just like a little bit saying, younger, five right. years younger. Little, yeah, yeah. Four, three to five years younger, yeah, they're and they're all, all super about down it. To be very and like it, yeah. it's almost a semi-viable career mm. path. Oh it, yeah, no, it absolutely is. If yeah. you find your own little, you know, your own little niche that yep. that you got going that yep. nobody else has really hopped on as big. Yeah, even if people really, have, I like, guess it's different. Like, I guess it really doesn't take that many people. Like, if you can develop a small but very loyal following, that you're good. You're yeah. good. Then it'll just take off. Yeah. More people will hear about and you. And it is. It's and it's so crazy base. the stuff that is becoming viable and like how weird and pretty much everything it gets. Yeah. pretty much everything do you guys know yeah. Belle delphine no yeah she's you do yeah yeah she's like you know she was a like a gamer anime yeah, type yeah. chick so she, and then she, she got really sexy and like kinda, started started yeah. posting just videos that people would obviously watch because she's sexy right right, right. stuff like so, that so so she's Sex got sales, this baby she, <laughs> she's got this like weird uh i'm going to see if i can pull up a picture really quick um but she's like Sort of weeaboo, like anime yeah, girl, like definitely weeaboo. you know the, like, the, the, the like, like anime, anime weeaboo yeah. is an anime fan, yeah, for okay. sure. Uh, but like I, cat I never, girl, you know, I'm imagining yeah. pigtails. Sometimes and sometimes in some of her videos, I'm sure. But she yeah, has definitely got like but... like she's kind of going for like a Japanese vibe. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. But she really like she started as a YouTuber, you know, just doing like makeup tutorials and basic stuff like that, and doing gaming and stuff. Um, but is she, she actually really, a gamer? I actually don't know. I just I, I just she figured I'm, she I'm was. I'm pretty sure she did. She definitely but plays games. She <laughs> whether she does. She so. hey, all kind girls of, play games. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she kind of broke the internet when she started selling jars of her oh, used bath water. Oh, that's right. What? That's what I was trying yes. to think of. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody was all over it. Yeah, they love her. Yeah, like, really. Yeah, she's just yeah. selling bath water. Is there any Use DNA in water. there? Would there be DNA in there? That's a yeah, good question. I, mean, I don't possibly, know if anyone ever possibly, like tested it for sure. But could see you going either way. Uh, well, depends which jar. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she. Uh, I'm sure. It it she's become really controversial. She actually, I just read an article earlier today. She has been nominated for a couple. You know, Pornhub does like the uh, what are they called? Like XMAs or something. Some it's like sort the, of the adult. Uh, I cannot think of what they're called, like, but it's like the adult like acting. You know, awards. Oh, gotcha. okay. Um, yeah. And she's been nominated for like a few of those, even though. They're not even. She's, like, she doesn't get they naked are, in them. They right? are sexy videos, but like but there is not, no she's outright being, nudity. Yeah, there's no nudity. Yeah, there's there's never anything. usually other men or anything like that. She's just a sexy chick doing things that people find sexy, even if they're yeah, normal yeah. activities. But there's weird stuff too. Like um, one of her most viral videos is I. It has some sort of enticing title that sounds like a typical porn video title. But it's literally just her taking, like, she's dressed sexy and stuff, and she literally just takes a raw egg and, and like, bites, bites it. it. Yeah, And, like, for sure. lets it, like, So leak. stuff like that. Wait, is yeah. she, does she do ASMR? Pro- maybe. Possibly. She, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never yeah. seen her. Wait, are those actual tattoos? No, no, she's oh, okay. just writing on her face. Interesting. This is a really, really interesting theme. culture. It's almost like she found yeah, her like wild. her niche like attraction, you know, because there's but a certain so, kind of appeal. It's so niche. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be like there have niche to be guys niche. that are like super into that kind of girl. Oh, oh. D- <laughs> <'Cause that's laughs> there's a whole hell of Alex a lot and of them. I are dude. just like, yeah, there are tons <laughs> of other guys. <laughs> no, there's a whole hell of a lot of them that are into. Well, that even type me, of I'm like, sure. it, it's a different kind of attraction. Like, I, I find her cute. I mean. That's yeah, like yeah. one picture, but like I've but seen like, like she's sexy very, anime girls yeah, yeah. for sure, and it's it's yeah. a different kind of appeal. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, big time. Oh yeah, she's gorgeous. Then like in a really in a really gamer, weird like cartoon. Yeah, way. cartoon yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. And she yeah. pulls it off really well. That's she does. her goal. Yeah, I feel like she has know. braces. I think maybe in some of them. I think that those are props, like in some because they're not in all of her pictures. Yeah, yeah, I've seen her without braces. I feel like, dude, this is really interesting. This is a niche kind of sex appeal. Yeah, Yeah. I forgot about the bath, the bath, the bath bath water water thing. thing. I remember reading about that. I was like, like, what? That was big. Yeah, where everyone. That was when I first read about her. I was just like bath water. I was like, what? I was like, hell, dude. If if people will buy, why not sell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's just bath water, what is it gonna do? Yeah. If I was like, Justin Bieber, I'd be blowing my, my nose water. all day. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. <laughs> just but if people wanted my bath tissues. water, I'm up for business, dude. Like I'm gonna take lots <laughs> of baths. Yeah. I'm gonna have lots of bath water for everybody. It's like, hey, I farted <laughs> in this batch. Here, buy some bath water, baby. <laughs> Premium batch. <laughs> get yeah, put it on your eyes, you can get pink eye. Just wash <laughs> your face with it. <laughs> Belle Delphine. That's her name, right? Delphine. Delphine. Bill Delphine. Bill yeah, Dolphin. Pro- she probably has like a part dolphin. <laughs> a sex appeal to the Japanese culture as well. Because she's like sure, she's yeah. a white girl that does their kind of appeal. At least like I in the anime saying. community. Yeah. No, I could see that for sure. Because I've seen that same look, but with Asian chicks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, like I feel like that's yeah. pr- like I've seen that with like multiple Asian chicks. I don't know. Just <laughs> Throughout yeah, my sure. internet experiences, I don't know where. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, earlier this year, Belle Delphine grabbed headlines after she allegedly sold 500 jars of her own bath water at 30 bucks a pop. Nice, 30 dude, bucks a pop. Yep. That's pretty good, man. Do you, just, I just bet you could jar flip jar those, like man. I bet you could flip yeah. those. Oh, absolutely. She's probably still cranking them out if she's, <laughs> she's getting <Dude>. buyers. Crazy. <laughs> She found her hustle. <laughs> She's like, I sell bath water, yo. In a yeah. big way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's interesting. It's like bath water and me eating raw eggs. What's the appeal? Yeah. What's the appeal? Like just the fact for that her, she was in people. there naked? Do you think Do you think there's something sexual about that bath water? Well, I, not I, I think from they're her almost doing it. Be. I think in the people's mind that yeah. are buying it, definitely. I mean, in a, in a sense, it's the same. Sure. It's the same sort of weird attraction Why as guys who are it? like, <laughs> as like guys who are into like buying girls dirty panties. Yeah, yeah, I can like, see that. Yeah. Instance, I guarantee most of the people who were buying those jars were dudes who thought she was really attractive. You know, I no. doubt. It, I doubt it's less like a, a, a fan of a band. 
like me being or, a fan of like, like a, know, a band like of guys and I get, girl, I get a drumstick like, or something. You know, I think it's way yeah, different or like than that. Teen I think girl it's like buys a lock of her favorite singer's hair off eBay or whatever. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not quite the same kind of it's thing. It's not quite the same. It's kind of similar. It's a step closer. On, yeah. For on sure. A, a lock level. of hair is a step closer. I feel like. Cause yeah. it's more like, it's more personal. It's them. They're yeah. Like, it's a piece of them. It's touched them. It's like, yeah, it's got the DNA. Yeah. So I think it's that probably mixed with some, some sexualness based on like how she presents herself. Do you think it's like a, a sexual attraction, a sexual appeal in the aspect that she's in that bathwater naked and it's I'm like sure touching people are her naked body, it. but yeah. also that it almost, the I, maybe I'm getting way too metaphorical no, with this shit right now, just but funny, yeah. the, the, the ritual of showering is cleansing and it almost represents purity and like an innocent attraction form. Mm. You know what I mean? I like, like, I like where your mind's going with it. I almost doubt the people that are buying the bathwater. I doubt that's running the They're, they're probably not <laughs> they're like, like They're like the oh, ritual of this purity. this has touched dude. her pussy. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it's probably more like that than like the ritual of Delphine's purity is <laughs> I have her pureness or her dirt. I shall symbolically use the jar. No, Somebody baptize you know, me with this. this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's like that. I think it's like definitely more like... <sighs> I, I hope don't this even was know. in her ass I've crack. Never, I've never even thought about purchasing <laughs> used bath water ever. And no. I don't dude. think I ever will. That's that's great business strategizing, though, on her part. Like, oh, yeah, she no, she's that killing through. it. Like, she did, she wasn't it. selling she's nasty smart. tissues, which that I don't even understand even more. Like, at least this bath water thing, I kind of get it. I kind of get yeah, it's it. It's like, what's the big deal? Bit. It's bath water. Yeah. But like I, I said, I if I was in the position where people would purchase my bath water, I'd mm-hmm. be selling it all day. I mean, Dude. some fetishes, <laughs> like not? some fetishes, I get. It's like it's, I'm not into it, but right. But you understand. I get it. I yeah. get it. But like, like in Alaskan pipeline, I don't know if you know what that is. It's when you shit in a condom and, you, <laughs> and then you put about it the in the, pipe, the actual pipeline. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to take the no, conversation. No, yeah, no, I'm, this we're going there. I'm ready to we're hear. Going we're going. We're going at a condom. hard left turn. But anyway, it's whenever you take a shit into the condom and then put it. You tie it up, put it in the freezer, let it freeze, and then you use it as a dildo. I've heard about that. That's called an Alaskan pipeline. Yeah. I've made jokes about that, but without the condom. Just like, yeah, I freeze my own poop. Or <laughs> <laughs> Use your mask. It'll do it. No. But no, that. that well, sounds, you need some lubrication. Sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, it sounds You might as terrible. well just buy a dildo if you're going to stick it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, let's make it poop. <laughs> so like, it, my, but my reasoning for bringing that up, it's like, I don't get it. I don't get yeah, it. Teach that, their own, a, but I don't get it, man. That's definitely one where I'm just like, I don't know. It's weird because, like, uh, yeah, I feel like I, I at least understand most of the popular fetishes mm-hmm. for sure. Even if I'm not into them, I can definitely connect the sure. dots in the mind yeah, yeah. and the human mind. Do you guys get foot like, fetishes? Oh, sure. I mean, I feel like foot fetishes are like the most common, right? I get them, but I don't I get have it to them. to an extent. I get it, but I don't have them, like, at yeah. all, really. Feet are just, like, feet. They're used for walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get it. I, I can I can really understand any part of the body being a fetish. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. The belly button. I'm yeah, sure people have that. for sure. Because, yeah. Mm. yeah. Maybe the, the ears. It's like, it's like the only hole I can't fit my dick in. <laughs> 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 I even get Therefore, it between her toes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want what I can't have. <laughs> this whole episode has been so sexual. It's been hella sexual from dude. the get go. In a what is going on? way, I'm gonna be walking have, out. Have just none like, of us like gotten any in a while? Like, <laughs> I haven't gotten any in a long dude, it's time. Been a while I will be real me. with you for sure. It's been me and me <laughs> for sure. We all go uh, home just and just We all oh, dude, like, As soon you know. as you guys are fucking out of here, like, <laughs> he's gonna just lock that Brad. door. <laughs> Come here, Ella. I'll get the peanut butter. <laughs> Sorry to bring you this, Ella. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. No! I just, I just, I just heard what you said. Oh, Lordy. But God, no, I agree. This has it. been a sexually charged uh, <laughs> conversation. For sure. I think that's what happens when you don't have a topic. Shit just goes off the rails. Yeah, yeah. Jordan. What happens uh, when you don't have a fucking topic? <laughs> I've noticed that at work. I've been like, I've been saying some raunchy shit. Like, I'll, I'll have to apologize to my coworkers and be like, I don't like when I first started working with newer people mm-hmm. this summer that I hadn't. Uh, I'd realize just when conversation flows or whatever and shit gets goofy, and then realize I'm being way raunchier than everyone else. And then <laughs> I remember uh, the first few weeks with the 
people I haven't worked with before, I would have to ask to, for, to make me feel comfortable. Be like, hey, if I ever cross any lines or make anyone feel uncomfortable, yeah. <laughs> call me out on my shit. <laughs> I don't know when to stop. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like there is no boundaries where where this is. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and everyone's usually okay. They're like, no, we get it. Like, yeah, she makes it feel good, and it'd be like, because I feel like if it was coming out of someone else's mouth, right. they would not be okay. Right. They're <laughs> very That's kind, funny. sweet. Yeah, ladies. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm fucking talking Healthy about weird place. shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, funny. Yeah, yeah. But I'm the same way, man. I don't have like too many boundaries with with just yeah, like talking. But, yeah, talking. I'll talk to like any. I mean, not with like professors or whatnot. Like, nobody who has any power over me, but like anybody who doesn't have any power mm. over me, I'm just like mm. super. As open, long as like, you're on like open. the same social plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Interesting. Well, even even like a. Yeah, I guess not friends, parents, because I it pretty much any nobody that it could like negatively impact me or like and again, no one way. who has any power over you who can yeah. influence, you know, your path forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so just no filter around any lower creatures. Well, like, I was telling like James, I've I've be, like it's becoming a very consistent thing. And I I don't know why this is, but it's becoming like I mean not like every single shift, but I'd say like at least one in three shifts, I'll get a complaint at work. Like somebody will complain about me, and I'm like, "Someone will complain about you." At, at work. first, it really yeah. <laughs> dude, let it really me seemed... let me just interject here. Uh huh. You're worried about getting complaints at work, and you're not sure why. But we also started this episode off with prison rape. <laughs> yeah, we straight <laughs> talked about prison rape for a long <laughs> time. <laughs> Great point. That was like a solid 10, 15 minutes of that to open the show. So I just, yeah. I walked we, need up be, my, we need to be careful with these mouths we got on. Hello, God. my name is Jordan. I'll be your waiter today. What do you think about butt sex? Yeah. <laughs> just like, I mean, if you're saying that, I can see why you're getting complaints. <laughs> They're like, you know, Jordan's just straight up bringing up butt sex in front of the, <laughs> the people. Yeah. It's like, he needs to lay off Yeah, this that. explains a lot about the guy who thought you were hitting on his girlfriend. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh, Lordy. I, I shouldn't have brought up butt sex. No butt stuff. <laughs> No butt stuff carrying forward into this server <laughs> experience. But no, no, I keep, I will get complaints like somewhat consistently. And I, I'm like, at first it really bothered me. I was like, mm. dude, I'm doing my best. I'm being very meticulous with details. I'm remembering mm. everything. Every once in a while I'd slip up, but like as anybody would, but my, my yeah, working memory is like happen. dramatically right. improved and I've been really proud of myself in that way. I'm extremely amiable. I think that's my, the only hypothesis I have is that I get too comfortable with people too quick and i'm probably that's talking honestly kind of what i was thinking like i talk to yeah. them yeah. more than they yeah. want to be talked to because whenever mm -hmm. they're expecting a server to just like hang out there it's like dude they go away but that's what makes the job go by quicker i try to spark up good conversation <laughs> yeah, with people for sure. and i think most people think it, appreciate it but every yeah. once in a while i get people that i was gonna say like i think it. it takes the right kind of customer Right kind because, of customer every like, right day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it totally depends. Like, for me, like, I would be totally up for it. Like, if a server wanted to get involved and, like, actually, like, you know, mm -hmm. come and, like, start a conversation, like, I could get to know them personally a little bit. Like, yeah. dope. That would be awesome. But it really does so depend. Many, yeah, but there are yeah. so many people out there who are literally just, like, I want you to, like, be polite and, like, bring me my shit yeah. and check on me frequently. For me, it can go both but ways. Fuck off. I'm the same yeah. way. It can go both. <laughs> like some, I, because I, I know so because I've had plenty of experiences with just at a restaurant or food place with one person or two people, where I felt myself getting annoyed that a waiter wouldn't leave. I'm just like, yeah, hey, we're trying to chill, you know, like You're I'm not I'm in our group. To have a conversation with, <laughs> yeah, you know. But then other times, and a, a certain amount of that goes into the server's ability to, you know. Read the situation tell, and yeah, sort of like to read you know, the see the landscape for, sure. at, for what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because other times it is cool to have like a cool waiter or whatever. That's oh yeah, you totally. can tell they're down to shoot the shit a little bit. But yeah, yeah, I guess a lot of times, yeah, I guess I'm sort of just like, yeah, it'd be nice if they weren't here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, depends yeah. on the mood. It depends on the context. If you're on, on a day, date, it's like oh yeah, yeah like, on a date away. you don't want a yeah. fucker hanging around. Yeah, right and right. I, I don't think I do it too too much, but I uh -huh. do. Do it probably more than I probably should. Just ask for Again. both their numbers each time. Yeah. It's like, let's hang out like tonight. Hey, let's you guys both let's their guys. receipts. Just like leave your number with a heart. And just like. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah. I well, actually, there's this concept, and I think it kind of ties back to this. Uh, there's this t concept that I I was listening to a lecture by like Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, and Brett Weinstein, and they were all sitting around talking 
about this concept called metaphorical truth. And basically the concept is that you can tangibly or not necessarily tangibly, you can prove it logically or however to be falsified. Like it's, it's false. Like it's, it's not true, but if you were to act as if it were true, then you are better off. So like a good example that they use is, is uh, a loaded gun. Like if you or it, okay, any unloaded gun, if you are going to, you always want to act as if that gun is loaded. So always point it at the floor, never point yeah, it yeah, at somebody. It, like, always uh, keep the yeah, safety yeah, 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 on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if you know that it's unloaded, it's better to, oh, to yeah. believe that it is. But like you, you know is, for a yeah. fact, like you know for 100%, yeah. if you were going to you bet still, $1 yeah. million dollars still, the, down the street, then you right. would bet that money every single time that. Yeah. You could pull the yep. trigger and nothing would happen, mm-hmm. but you should still, you should still act as it. if because you're better off because Treat then it every single gun as if it is loaded with the safety off every time. True. Do not point at anything For unless sure. you intend to shoot it. Yeah. Or Agreed. or you know, Agreed, yeah. obviously like the ground if you you know, if you shoot it and nothing happens. And mm-hmm. again, that if you were if I was to point an empty loaded gun, I, <laughs> I'm contradicting and, uh, myself. <laughs> Paradoxical. Uh yeah, if I <laughs> empty loaded gun. If I'm going to <gasps> Shoot an empty gun at Alex, nothing would happen. But Unless if you were to act as one. if if it was empty loaded, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. 50, Double 50. barrel. One barrel's loaded, the other's not. <laughs> but uh yeah, if you if you I mean falsifiably it is not loaded, and if I pulled the trigger, it it would not kill him. But again, going back to act as if it were true. So the reason I brought this concept up is I have a metaphorical truth that I like to live by. Obviously, this is not right, but it it makes me carry myself in, and I kind of do believe this. Um, but anyway, anyway, I oh, where was I going with this? Um, okay, I have a metaphorical truth that I hold of my own self image, and that is, I assume every single person likes me, and if they don't like me, <laughs> then funny. they're either wasn't wrong that. or they're lying. <laughs> That's, See, that's I, seriously what I told myself. I, that's kind of the opposite. Like, I tend to assume that no one likes me. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Going in. I feel yeah. like I'm in between, but sometimes it will stray low. And it's not I, like a, I like a, to a start false at confidence. The bottom. I like to start at the bottom, and then when people are, like, okay with me or when they actually in, like, enjoy my company, I'm like, all right, hell yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. Let's <laughs> kick it. Yeah. yeah. The, your method is pretty funny. I like yeah, yeah. It's that, just like, that's just what I And assume. if they don't, assume they're lying or... They're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, they're they're wrong. wrong. And they don't know me. The best they don't know spot. me. <laughs> You're wrong if you don't like me. And I don't think it's like a false confidence. It's just like, I like oh me a lot. God. And like, I'm just going to assume you like me as well. Mm. And the reason being is that I carry myself in, I guess, a more confident way, uh, a way that makes people like me <laughs> even if they don't, even if they don't, yeah. But I, I can at least mm. act as if they do, yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, yeah. and again, I don't. I really don't think it's like a false confidence because I think, I think most people get to know me at least somewhat well end up liking me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but I, sure. I don't like genuinely believe that. It's but I just act the as people if who it eat at Olive true. Garden that fucking hate you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they hate me. They hate me. But they're wrong because they don't know me. Right? Yeah, they only wrong. met me for twenty they're minutes. Wrong. They're yeah. wrong. They're wrong. They can't know you. Yet. I know me. Yeah. They don't know me. Mm. <laughs> Again, metaphorical truth. Funny. I I would argue that carrying yourself in that way is going to lead to better social interactions because you're going to carry mm. yourself for better, sure, yeah, or more appropriately, and and you're going to feel better about yourself mm-hmm. whenever you enter that, like assuming somebody likes you, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I probably sound very conceited, but it, it, it's not like I no, genuinely I mean, no, believe no, this. Right. It's no. like you use belief as a tool to. So yeah, to just yeah. change the way you see things and act in general. It's like, like a loose belief. I'm I'm sure a I have tons assumption. of yeah, for sure. I'm sure I have tons of examples. Like if I had a night and just thought of them, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But I think I use I use beliefs that I know aren't necessarily like uh, objectively true to for some end, you know, mm-hmm. either to change the way I see things or to change the way I act about something, you know. But yeah, no, I I think I mean even. Uh, you could argue that the mythologies in every single religion is like a metaphorical uh, truth that people just use mm. to understand themselves in reality. Even if it's not, you can't put it on paper and say, See, it happened like this because it didn't. Do you have an example <laughs> to explain? 
example of, are you, are of you me or like religion any, in general? Yeah, like religion. Like, like well, any religion, I'd say every single uh, parable mythology of all the major religions, they're kind of contradictory, you know? So obviously they can't all be <laughs> right. And I think for the most part, none of them are factually right where you can look it down on a paper and be like, yeah, see, it's, it's like this because it's not. But Do you think they're all partially right? I mean, it depends which aspects you're talking about, but you know, it's hard to get into really. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, specific examples I can't really think of other than, yeah, just stating the overarching idea of mythology in general. And like a, a lot of people who follow uh, religion and nowadays may not believe actually that it happened in whatever the way it did, that the, whatever their holy book says, you know. But, uh, they may still use it. Like, uh, for instance, probably a lot of Christians in my family don't think that, uh, like, God created the world at seven days and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But they, like, kind of use the whole story as some, like, uh, thing to resolve all the issues in their life. You know? So that would be a so way not... of, of seeing it as a how you described a me metaphorical truth or whatnot. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Almost like that but, parable or that narrative mm. is supposed to teach us some higher lesson. Yeah, sure. But yeah, it's still sure. kind of hypothetical, or because that's mm -hmm. that's what a lot right. of people tell me, and that's this is something I've come to terms with recently. And I I had no idea growing up, like um, growing up around reading the Bible and whatnot, like going to a religious school uh, first through sixth grade. I never knew that you're not supposed to interpret the Bible literally. You're supposed to interpret <laughs> it kind of depends uh, symbolically. School, depends what school you go the to. Bible, point, yeah. The Bible is poetry. Oh, yeah. It's, through and through. That's what all the oh. holy books should be oh, viewed as, just yeah. poetry. It would make yeah. things way simpler. And they are beautiful way poems. Simpler. Yeah, no, they're but great you poems. you cannot take them literally. If you do, you'll get like, people slashing each other. Do you think that fucking <laughs> Shakespeare is a, like, a biography? <laughs> yeah, or not, dude, autobiography? Right? Yeah, no. Right? No fucking way. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't even know why it's a debate anymore, but it is somehow. It, and, it totally, you know, it, yeah, it's crazy. And like crazy. you said, you're like, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to take it literally and be like, well, that was how you learned it. Tons of places teach that right. you must take it literally. That's, yeah. Which yeah, is that's insane. what I, I grew up yeah. learning that it was all oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was yeah, all yeah, to be taken. Sure. This is how it is. Matter of fact. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. 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 I feel like I was super lucky to grow up with a dad <laughs> who is a, like he is a professional writer, you know? Oh, nice. And he, cool. he actually started, you know, he grew up Southern Baptist, and when he originally went to school, he went to seminary. Like, mm -hmm. you know, right. yeah. he he went to school to be a pastor. Like, he can legally marry people right mm -hmm. now. Um, I like that. I like that. I mean, that's not hard to get there. You can do it online. Well, true, true. <laughs> he, he went through the proper channels. <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> um, but, yeah, because of his, you know, his literary view and because of his background and, like, his his current leanings, you know, I was very much like brought up. I, w I was raised in church, you know, mm -hmm. and even though like I I grew up going to the church like first through fifth or sixth grade or, or birth through fifth or sixth grade, I grew up going to the same church that my dad grew up in, which was like a Southern Baptist, you know, yeah. the first Baptist church of Granby, Missouri, Granby. you know. But still, like, I was always ingrained or, or uh, you know, had this idea, uh, you know, really, really, you know, preached to me, more or less, that, like, this is poetry and, like, this is not necessarily literal. That's great. And yeah, yeah. yeah. That so, was in a Southern Baptist church? That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, even, awesome. I mean, we, we went to this church that my dad grew up in, but he's mm. he's really, like, my, both my parents, even though they're religious, are very liberal people. Right. Um, so there's always a lot of, you know, very interesting, like, spiritual belief versus, I don't know what you want to call it. Doctrinal like, following, yeah, following yeah, a specific kind of, doctrine like, that's set before it, it, you. It feels like very, again, religious, spiritual belief, but, like, with sort of a real-world context. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what's needed. And I'm yeah. like, I feel like the dogma in religion. Like I'm, I'm not saying. Sorry to cut you off. No, I'm, cool. I, I personally am not really religious now. 
Oh, yeah, um, no, for sure. But, Neither am I. <laughs> you know, like, if you're going to do it, I feel like that's the way to do it. If you're going to do it, yeah, do yeah. it in a way that's totally. practical. Totally. That has, you know, that has to do with now. Because yeah. if it doesn't have to do with now, then why yep. even bother exactly. with it, you know? But, that becomes yeah. kind of an art of applying it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those parables, yeah. those lessons. For sure. Those stories, yeah. those narratives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the people that get most turned away from religion are the ones that are raised, say for example, first through eighth grade, going to church, oh, required yeah. to do Bible study within their education system. They're graded mm-hmm. on their performance. I feel like the people that turn away from it and become almost anti-religion mm-hmm. are the ones that were. Or the, forced the, upon with dogmas. Of yeah, religion. or like yeah. the people like, who this are is like the way it violently is. atheist. Mm-hmm. You know? Like yeah. I had a violently... Yeah. You know, and sometimes oh, it dude, still comes my, out. Yeah, my, <laughs> uncle, still comes my out. uncle is violently atheist. Yeah, Even sure. though, like, like I've talked about my dad, you know, he's a very, like, liberal person. Mm-hmm. But he's still spiritual. He's still religious. Right, and like, yeah. even though he's so reasonable about it compared to so many other people, like, I have, like seen him and my uncle literally like red in the face like yeah just like yelling at each other you're like oh shit yeah oh wow yeah yeah for sure (laughs) that's pretty funny yeah it's crazy what it'll do to people my dad always said stay away from with as far as like topics of conversation like (laughs) i kind of do follow this rule to some extent not with close friends Mm -hmm. and certain friends i'm very comfortable talking about the topics with right but um uh, especially people I'm starting to get to know or people I don't know super well or just meeting, uh, stay away from religion <laughs> and politics. There's yeah. a high a level of ego involvement with both of those. Oh, and that's yeah. when some ugly sides of people come out Dude, it, and it, the yeah, unwillingness it to agree. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I had a very lucky experience lately. I've, I've been seeing a girl lately and uh, like the, the second time – I saw. I actually together. saw a girl earlier today as well. I saw her. You saw yeah. his girl? No, no. I saw. I saw <laughs> I a girl. Yeah. I actually oh, wow. saw. I know. I saw another oh. too. I saw. Yeah. yeah, the third. Yeah, I saw. I saw a girl. Yeah, I saw a girl. So, a girl yeah, in general? general. Yeah, I just saw a girl. <laughs> Wait, like you saw? <laughs> like you saw someone of the female sex? Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but so this is literally the second time that we're out, and we we're just like talking about our childhoods and stuff and you know like everything that i was just talking about came up and she just goes like what do you think about all that and i like launched into it just like we were just talking about and immediately i was like like, foot in the mouth what if i just like offended her oh what did you say basically what i just said that like well i basically said like i don't you know i don't believe in anything Right now, not to oh, say I that I'm you. writing it off, but just because I I, I haven't personally experienced mm. anything or, or right, seen yeah. enough to like make me believe in a particular thing. For sure, thing. yeah, yeah. Totally. But immediately, would you I say was you're like, theistic? You have a theistic interpretation of the divine. I don't. It's a tricky question too. It is a tricky. It's like, question. what do you mean by like, theistic? Exactly. Yeah, you know, like for I sure. I mean, are are we talking mono or poly or? I like, mean, just theistic in general. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's weird even what that means. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I. It it is hard for me to believe that there is you know that all of this happened by accident. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. But again, like I, I haven't seen or experienced enough of any one thing, or or seen anything to make me believe mm-hmm. that there was a creator. Would you say you're agnostic? You just don't, I don't know. I think so. Okay. No, I don't think I'm yeah. agnostic. You say just so. like open-minded atheist. It's also oh, weird then, to put a label. Yeah. It is. On it, it is weird. Which like is funny. Yeah. You know, if again, like if I experience something that like really really moved me like Mm -hmm. i could see it right yeah for sure yeah it's confusing because there's also a lot of philosophies that even describe themselves as neither theistic or atheistic Mm. which is confusing for a lot of people yeah i haven't looked into that yeah for sure but why do you have to choose one you know you don't necessarily you know because when you feel like you have to choose one you're subscribing to someone's definition of what you know, mm. theism is, and you could just go off of that definition, but then usually it involves a uh, like God 
And then you have to describe uh, what that means. That's like the most ambiguous like, word in the dictionary. It really is. Right? It doesn't mean anything anymore. It means whatever, you know, because pantheists call upon God, whereas, you know, you know, Buddhists that don't have a God kind of have a God. Mm. When they talk about the, the way they talk about reality, even though they're non theistic or whatever, right. the way they talk about reality and like the path of wisdom and where it comes from is pretty fucking godlike. Yeah. You know, so it's it's confusing when you try to make those words. Like, uh, I know, like Zen Buddhism, for instance, wouldn't describe themselves as either theistic or non theistic. They're described as neither. Interesting. Yeah. But still sure. not agnostic. Not agnostic either, but, mm. you know, like a, that a, is a little, fully little. That is interesting. That's interesting. I mm. feel like I don't fully understand that. Yeah, it's Not tricky. To... It's because like, yeah, the the non dualistic schools of thought uh, usually describe themselves as neither, because uh, you know, when there's no dualism, then you can't describe it as anything. You know, is it reality? Is it God? Is all of it God or all of it reality? It's really like, what, what does that even mean? It's just words that we're making up. Maybe there's a so. limitation within my my reasoning for thinking this through, but it's it, my my interpretation of it is on the question of is there a God or is there, there a God? Am I theistic or am I not? Mm -hmm. I would say I don't believe there is a God. I don't believe there's not a God. But then that draws me to the conclusion that I would have to be agnostic and simply I don't know. <laughs> right on. So uh, that's I mean, interesting. Even if, even if you feel like you know what you believe, uh, I could see you still landing in between. Like I don't describe myself as agnostic, but I don't say that I'm a theist or a non-theist. You know, those they're just both ways of looking at reality are are too limiting for sure. Uh, definitely. To say you're yeah. neither does that imply that you're both simultaneously? Uh, n well, at least in my case, no. Also, uh, back to Buddhism again, I hate to always draw upon it, but a lot of things they say is like, uh, awakened mind is, is not existent, but it's not non-existent. It's not neither existent and neither exist. And it's not neither, uh, existent <laughs> or non-existent. And it's also not both existent and non-existent. The whole idea is it's beyond description. You can never find a form to put it to what it actually is because it'll just end up being bullshit and limiting it from its infinite capacity, essentially. Yeah, I understand so, that, but that still draws me to the conclusion of, of I don't know. Yeah, of I don't know. Yeah, for sure. And you could you go that yeah, way. And if, if, yeah. that's, if that's how you see, like, agnosticism, even if, uh, yeah, it's tricky when... Uh, yeah, if you just don't know exactly how I view agnosticism is more of uh, like I don't know whether there's a god or not. I almost think of it's like a question agnosticism for me, and maybe I have the wrong idea of it. Whether is what I'm trying to describe is uh, no, I know exactly what I believe, but I can't call it a god, and I can't call it not a god mm. for sure. Would you I, say that I, lies I somewhere like in the middle? Yeah, yeah, that's just sort of like broadly spiritualism. Broadly spiritualism, yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah, that could be. Am I thinking about this sure. way too like binary? Possibly, or like, like what, too much what duality. To, like, yeah, too like my dualistic. perceptions kind of too dualistic, for tainted sure. with dualistic thinking, like this I mean, or that. But then yeah. I I don't know this or that, so I'm almost avoiding the question by saying I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see where it's like I'm pussying yeah. out, man. I'm yeah. pussying out. We all are. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I I feel like the topic of religion is uh, notorious for that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's but full it, of a lot of bullshit too. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so much. Bullshit's the name of the game in the religious world. Totally is. <laughs> totally is. The for foundation sure. for Founda most of it. Foundation right? of religion <laughs> is bullshit for sure. Yeah, and this has come from someone who well, I have a lot of respect for a lot of the philosophies that developed from religion yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I'm down yeah. to say it's all bullshit, definitely. <laughs> Largely, it can be useful yes. bullshit. I'm not saying it's some not. of it, yeah, yeah absolutely, for yeah, sure. yeah. Not to say that there's not valuable stuff mm -hmm. in religion. Oh you know? no, yeah, absolutely for sure. It's almost like it just plays upon for whatever reasoning, whether the motive be greed or just simply the existential desire to explain what all this is, and mm -hmm. and religion kind of found something that I could tap into, and then right, yeah. Give some form ways. of an explanation so that people can seek 
comfort, I guess. I think comfort's always what the goal of uh, pretty much doing everything is in some weird way. Like there's comfort in that explanation. You're moving. Whatever you do, it's for the ultimate reason of, uh, I mean, if you want to tie it to the evolutionary way of looking at it, of mm. survival, you know. Mm. But when you think of like, uh, you know, you're going to work and getting paid so you can chill out and have a place to sleep, you know. You, everything's True. based on you trying to be more comfortable, I feel like, for sure. Yeah. And every religious path, if anyone ever goes to a religion, it's to be more comfortable, you know, whether it's to Jesus's arms, you know, I was lost and blah, blah, I was a drug addict and I was sucking dick for crack or whatever. And then you go, <laughs> and then you go to Jesus, you go to feel belonging, you go to feel yeah. like you belong, essentially. I feel like belonging is another way of saying it. Uh, and I feel like that's why so many people flock to religions or philosophies that already have a following, you know. It's a very common uh, archetype, by the way. Definitely, yeah. And so... Yeah. yeah, they just want to feel like a part of something so they don't feel so lost in me versus the world. And you feel more, uh, yes, I have a place. Yeah. You know, I think that's the whole um, idea behind all of it. Sort sort of a, a little bit of a shift, but I was mm-hmm. I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast earlier. Hell yeah. A guy named, I believe his name is Bob Lazar. Oh, the UFO guy? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I've seen it. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen his documentary on Netflix? I have not, but I want to. He goes more in depth to um, the podcast anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things that they talk about is like, human culture has like sort of evolved into like literally like the biggest goal that like most humans have like corporations and like larger interests and all this is just to like create stuff that works better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, for sure. Create stuff that works faster, more efficiently, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be. Very productive. But I feel like that's sort of linked to comfort. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, in an inherent way. You know, why would we want to speed things up if right, we didn't right. get shit done Except for to, us? Yeah, exactly. You know? Get yeah. shit done faster so that we can mm. relax more. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. It's not just like we're, uh, you know, production doesn't even seem like the main goal, even though it seems like that, like uh, rudimentary. Even if mm-hmm. you think of like lower species, everything's just trying to multiply itself. Right, right. Uh, so that's like the rudimentary form of it, and then. When, in yeah. human yeah. higher consciousness, it almost takes sure. the form of like. But I mean, uh, if you, yeah, if, especially if you think about like recently, you know, contemporary times, everyone's trying to make things, you know, bigger screens, faster speeds, bigger shit, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. slimmer phones, comfier chairs, comfier chairs, you know, whatever it may mm-hmm. be. Like it's all about creating things that work better. Yeah. yeah. So you think this insatiable desire for innovation? is all motivated by comfort like the desire for comfort or comfort either comfort pleasure belonging or satisfaction yeah even though the satisfaction of improvement of it yeah improvement maybe. or of feeling I mean, like, the think, results of think your or maybe way, competition yeah think way back about it why did humans start using tools you know to back as things easy. fucking cro magnets yeah, we want things easy We've been uh, inve- literally as long as the human species has been around. We've been trying to make things work better, mm-hmm. and we're still fucking doing it for sure. And we'll never be satisfied with it. Either. No, I mean, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Do you Some think we're? Think I don't we think so. Are we a species that's addicted to progress? <laughs> I think. I mean, yes, man. Yeah, we're we're getting sure. there now. We're getting there now. Yeah, no, I think definitely we're a species addicted to progress. Mm. But, Can we stop? Mm. If if collectively we decided to, yeah, I don't think yeah. we why? will. Why? Why would we, we want to? Why would we need to? Why would we ever? Yeah, it's almost like I mean, that progress is taking us further and further into the chaotic unknown, and that's just so intriguing to us because we're just mm-hmm. curious. Yeah, I mean, it is intri- we're, we're, we're curious looking creatures. into the chasm. Do you think that's what it is? Is it, is it comfort? Is it curiosity? Is I curiosity think it's, I think the it's, driving force? I think it's both. I think it's both. At least, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's. Both in different ways and probably different uh, circumstance, like uh, like an explorer like Lewis and Clark who have never seen the whole Americas or whatever. Progress. Know, yeah, pro- probably progress. They probably get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And then also curiosity is a huge thing. Obviously, they're not exploring the U.S. for comfort, you know, or else they would just chill at home. <laughs> probably pretty selfless <laughs> intentions too. And yeah, maybe I mean, selfish. I don't know them personally, but uh, – 
I'd like, <laughs> I would like to think they had selfless intentions, <laughs> well, but even, maybe they're total dicks. I even no this idea. curiosity, it's it's such a it's almost like a tragic trait because I, I was listening to a TED talk the other day with Sam Harris, mm-hmm. and he's talking about if we're talking about the apocalypse and there were to be like a solar flare or like a, a meteor mm-hmm. coming directly at us, we'd be like, oh, that's tragic. That's so sudden. That sounds terrible. Right. But if you think about it from the point of view of humans creating this technological innovation that drives us forward at such a rapid pace, that being artificial intelligence, then that artificial intelligence is somewhat intriguing to us, like in sci-fi and the Matrix and the Terminator, Mm -hmm. of technology robots that we exist, that we create, overpowering us and becoming like the dominant species like that's an intriguing ai almost oh it, us becoming the dominant species. no 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 they the artificial intelligence AI. that we create yeah. becoming, becoming dominant becoming yeah, like dominant matrix, over okay. human beings like that For sure that Scary narrative <laughs> is very very popular in science fiction culture and it's also very appealing it's like a weird archetypical story but like time and it might have happened I mean, it's total yeah. chaos like it's total chaos but it's so almost innately intriguing to us oh it's super in comparison it's to, to a meteor about. coming down and hitting us and right. ending us in seconds like we'd be like how can we solve mm. that problem but like ai it's like we're just so curious about where it goes and even if it comes to a very fatalistic ending there's still something yeah we gotta do it yeah there's still something intriguing to us about movies and pop culture creating these hypothetical Mm -hmm. interpretations of this technology overthrowing us for sure have have you guys looked at uh elon musk's project Neuralink? I don't know anything about it. I've heard about it, but I have not yet looked at it. I don't know enough about it. All I know is it has to do with installing some sort of uh, hardware in your brain. Basically, you do surgery oh. to do it. And, uh, yeah, there's these little micro like uh, wires that are in your brain that connect to some things. There's like an yeah, s- yeah. absurd number of them as well. Oh, you so you know about it? A-, a little bit, yeah. I yeah. watched his TED Talk, uh, or not TED Talk. He had, like, he had did a huge have a announcement talk. like a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so I, can- I don't know what actually happens, but I think like if you listen to Elon Musk, his talks, and when he was on Joe Rogan, uh, he talks about um, pretty much the goal of – uh, merging humanity with AI to merge consciousness with artificial intelligence, and uh, which is interesting. So is that something that he is like a proponent of? Oh, he's for it. Really? He's for it. And okay. uh, the vibe I kind of got from uh, wait, wait for what? For, for merging human human oh, humanity okay. with AI for for cybernetics. For basically. yeah, for yeah. yeah, he's probably down with the my cyborg understanding shit. is he he had this fatalistic approach to artificial intelligence and like. His antidote to that is that we kind of merge with the technology so that it yes, doesn't, yeah. so that we don't become separate, but his, instead become cohesive. Exactly. Yeah. His whole, the vibe I got, at least from listening to him just in general and seeing what he's doing, is sort of like uh, if you if you can't beat him, join him. Just talking mm. about like artificial intelligence. Mm. Like now, it's funny when I think about this, is because it's funny at work, um, a friend brought up Neuralink, but it, the conversation kind of revved into that from first him telling me about uh, robo roaches, which is basically uh, this thing where you can take a cockroach, a real cockroach, and cut off his antennas and basically install a little motherboard and like a, put it on its back, <laughs> and you can put the wires into their. Uh... What's wrong, Ella? <laughs> Someone's uh, walking on the sidewalk across the street. Oh, yeah. What is that noise? Was that someone walking on the sidewalk? Oh. Hey. Ew. But anyway, you... uh... Hi. What are you doing? What are you doing? She's trying to be on the pod. (laughs) She's trying to be on the pod. Oh, she's on the pod in a big way now. (laughs) But anyway, you attach this motherboard to this cockroach and like hook up the wires in the antennas that you cut off because that's Uh like nerve stuff. Uh And uh, you can basically you have a wireless remote control and uh, there's videos and you know 
projects of people doing this and you can kind of control the chemical the signaling yeah and you can it'll run on its own but like you can turn it in certain yeah. ways yeah and if you can do that with a cockroach you can obviously do it with a human as long as yeah. you build a way more complex system sure and yeah. if you can do it with but a human possible. on yeah. any level then eventually it's it, at least whether it's it'll end up happening or not it is possible for sure to program a human to control its thoughts all it you know just the fact that you can oh. do this with a cockroach in general proves that you can do proves it with a human so much. if you had a way more yeah. complex plan and system and technology yeah. I mean, they're all just you should be able signals. to exactly yeah. you should be able to create thoughts to program thoughts into a human mind like definitely for sure and so when i think about what elon musk is doing with this neuralink and I don't think there's that much controlling going on. I think maybe it's more info gathering his first project on, you know, installing things into people's brains. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a stepping stone, I feel like, to the level where uh, whether his intentions are pure or not, which let's say they are. Hopefully, uh, yeah, Hopefully. The knows? government, well, you know, once technology gets to a certain level, it's always a double-edged sword. Some government, you know, whether it's ours or someone else's or a bunch of them, are going to use it for control of the masses, for sure. Yeah. And so it almost, uh, if you guys have seen the SpongeBob movie, it totally makes me think of uh, all hell plankton when they got the buckets on their head <laughs> oh. and he's controlling them. I know it sounds sci-fi and yeah. bullshit and cartoon, but you can see how this is possible from the fact that you can control the signaling in a cockroach, even yeah. if it's it's so yeah. it looks so dumb. It's not like you can tell it to back up and it's perfect. <laughs> it's not. It's just running. It's freaking out. But then you can kind of turn which way it yeah. decides to go based on the chemical signaling. So you know humans aren't any more special than any other animal, other than the fact that we're crazier, and more, more complex. complex. Yeah, for sure. But we're animals just like everything else. Right, is. right. We work still, by the same nature yeah, that everything still else. Still controlled does. based off of electrical. For sure, Impulses. which means yeah. it can be manipulated. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's scary for me to think it is about scary. it. Uh, I mean, it's fucking cool. It's, it's rad it's as fuck very, to yeah. think about. But at the same <laughs> time, it's, it's just like I'm glad terrible. I won't be alive when you know babies are born already and there's an initial surgery right. after you know because shit right. will get there. We'll get yeah. there if humanity lasts so long, which it may or may not. That could go. <laughs> it way it too. will. I think, it will. I personally think like, it will. I have a lot shit, of friends that think that it won't. That shit is but. so close already. Yeah, like, for sure. it's going to be happening within a couple decades, I think. Yeah. Especially with the, like, exponential uh, growth of technology. And it's only speeding up. Yeah, it's just it's speeding up and speeding, speeding up. It's only speeding up. You know, up. Before it takes, it's like, terrifying. 10 years for some yeah. thing to be invented. Now it takes, like, one year for some crazy shit to be invented. I mean, it's just going to keep going. <laughs> exponential. What scares me is if you are at a competitive disadvantage if you're not at some way, shape, or form dependent upon that technology. Like, for example, 10 years ago, we weren't really that dependent on cell phones, but now you are literally at a competitive disadvantage if you're not using yeah. cell phones. Mm -hmm. You cannot get through college. You cannot graduate college without using a computer on pretty much a daily yeah, basis. It's kind of required now. Yeah, like you know, much. if you want to do it normally, yeah. at least for sure. Yeah. And like I know a very few people who have made it through college without owning their own laptop, mm -hmm. but they live in the computer lab. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know? Mhm. Mm for sure. Yeah, it's they got they have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no choice. Yeah. And like what do you do? If you're the person who doesn't have a smartphone and doesn't have a laptop and, you mm. know, class gets canceled because your professor emails you an hour before class. All right, yeah. You're not going to know. Mm. And you're going to waste two hours or whatever your time getting to campus and then back. Definitely, yeah. And, it, again, it was a total waste mm -hmm. because no one else was there to meet you. And you didn't find out until you got to campus <laughs> and waited around for the class to start and then realized no one was coming and went to the computer lab and pulled up your email mm -hmm. finally to check and found out. Right, yeah. And in theory, it'd be nice if you had the option of actually having the option to weigh out the opportunity cost. It's like, you know what? That was worth the 30-minute drive, mm. the 30 minutes of lost time so that I don't have to waste three hours a day on my cell phone. But... Ultimately, I don't really want to use my cell phone, but it's like, dude, mm. no, like you fucking have to use a phone. Yeah, for like sure. you kind of really have, have to. to. Mm. I mean, like, uh, I don't know, like, what, what's what would your life be like without a phone? Way less yeah, connected. <laughs> you what? You you probably hang out with your roommates, and that's imagine. about it. <laughs> you probably hang out with your roommates, yeah, for sure. 
just socially I my phone a disadvantaged. Lot. <laughs> so it would be, be interesting. Me too. Getting a job would be difficult without a phone and computer. I'm, oh, it would. It would be really so quick, challenging I'm, for I'm me. I'm curious. Do either of you guys have the screen time thing enabled on your phone? Yeah. What is that? Should we all pull up our screen times right now? There, there's an app on the like the newer iOSs that will tell you. It will give you updates like how much, like how many hours per day that you are on your phone. Oh, it's super and fat, it will, I'm sure. It will yeah. tell you like how many times you unlock it and like what apps is you spend it the most come time with, on. Come with the iOS? Yeah, yeah. So what is it called? Uh, is it in settings? Time. Or is it... I? Screen. I, I always thought know. this was in settings. I don't remember how I got it, but it just like it gives me an update yeah, every like yeah, couple weeks or something. Like? Huh. Yeah, I don't. Oh, know yeah, 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 it's under it's under settings. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So you just pull right. up settings, and that's like where your name is. It's funny. My name actually has my name. I I had cum dumpster for a while. Cum <laughs> dumpster. Oh, I still do. That's too I think I still, of course you fucking did. It's I told, called screen time. I, um, I told I my roommates, I'm like, tell me I won't. So like, if you open settings, yeah. Do I not have it? You may not be up to date. Hey, I got, I got 48 <laughs> seconds. I'm not up to date, I'm at 48 honestly. seconds on screen time. Yeah, look yeah. at this general software update. Well, I'm yeah, sure we're I'm... 44 <laughs> minutes into the day. And we've been uh, on the podcast the entire so time. Shoot, it is Alex oh, doesn't have it. How let's, many, What what is your let's check it out. screen time average? Wait, are, like average what per are we, day. So it, this will like combine. Mm. What are we doing last seven days or what, what are we doing? I got... <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad okay. I don't have it. Honestly, I don't want to. I know because I, I just know. got a notification yesterday. It'll it'll give you like once every week or two weeks. It'll be like your screen time was you know down ten percent from last <laughs> week or whatever, or or up fifteen or whatever it may be. So I just got uh, a notification a couple days ago. So I know off the top of my head what mine was. Oh. Like the average per day, but I was curious. My as to what my screen is. time average per day it, this past week, so just this past week, is three hours thirty four minutes. Yeah, I wonder if mine is honestly Dude, mine similar. Is I have no way idea. Way worse than that. If really? not, if not yeah. from the phone, then from TV or video yeah. games, mine would be pretty mine. Up there. Mine lately, like for the the last report I got, was five hours a day. <laughs> yeah, right on. Just from the phone. <laughs> Just on the phone, Dude, that's so and that's just like oh, you know, that's not always like a lot of times. My phone is set to never like auto lock. So yeah, you know, that, that so like if I just set it down it. like that, it's gonna be on. Yeah, you know, for sure. So like, so yeah, that probably happen. has. Yeah, definitely. Still, I'm sure it's not straight five hours looking. No, no, but tenth. still, like you get those and you just feel. <laughs> fucking disgusting yeah i'm, gl- right? I, I'm not gonna oh, update dude. honestly just because i don't want to know oh, wow. i wish you guys wouldn't even told me about that app i don't want to know yeah. that ignorance <laughs> is bliss on this front for sure it's crazy but yeah. anyway guys it is it is 12 46 and i was only gonna go till midnight <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so you guys 45 keep going, minutes but I'm i i think gonna, we gotta call it yeah, you want to call it too, too. all cool. right so, cool cool i'm on the same page well, so Oh, yeah. It's been a pleasure, well, guys. Good pod. Glad we, we finally got to do this. Started, we yes. started off real raunchy and was talking about some slimy, <laughs> good, greasy we stuff. And then we, we got a little deep. Yeah, yeah and then and then it got better. And then it okay. got better. Started off with prison rape. You know, I mean, it, it <laughs> took about you know two hours to finally get into some relatively you know digestible content. Yes, we got the people. We got there. Dude, those are my favorite though. <laughs> those Maybe are my here. favorite podcasts. The ones that we are joking about. Whether I mean, like j- honestly, joking about fucked up shit, but then we bring it back and it's like really conceptual. Yeah, there you uh, go. That's yeah. my favorite. We made it work, that's my man. Favorite. We made mm-hmm. it work. Yeah, Ella was a good guess. Yeah, this was fun. This yeah, was was fun. Yeah, this we'll was fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. We'll do it again for sure. We we oh, did yeah. need to do it again. We should. Yeah. We should. We could probably get in at least one more before semester's over. Oh, for like sure. I said, like, yeah. we I'm totally can. Going to school right now. So. Your your yeah. viewers are going to be sick of us. There we go. <laughs> They're going to be like, who cares? Need to switch it up from James yeah. and Alex. Yeah. <laughs> this fucker's got to go. Fuck these guys again. It's like. Mm-hmm. They're funny, but too much. Too much. They're funny, but I'm not trying to hear about yeah, prison rape. Yeah, I've, I've had enough prison rape jokes. <laughs> like, yeah. Trying to eat my yeah. breakfast. All right, well, we brought it full circle. We started with prison rape. Oh, yeah. For sure. And, and then bringing rape. it back around. So that's a good... <laughs> Damn, we brought I'm it right back. Good, good I love loop. you guys. I love, I love you too. too. For <laughs> sure. Love you both. Love Absolutely. you both. Definitely. Well, we got... Yeah, I yeah. All right. Really, I, who knows? Who knows where we will all be in like just a few months? As far as... Who knows we'll ever all three live in the Dead same city again? Dead in that. <laughs> don't, <no, laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, it's been right. a pleasure. Yeah. Cool. Until Absolutely. next time, guys. That's a wrap. Absolutely. You got the audio?